Case number 2027603. Sample versus Sarah Bowman. I'm going to name the record again. State. Dave Ketchford, I'm going to have to say. William J. State. Defense. Name's always Sarah Bowman. Tell me Henderson. Sarah Bowman. Is Bowman your identity support, please? You swear or have to support me. Tell me the truth, the whole thing, the matter of truth, some of the stuff. Good morning, ma'am. Can you state your name and date of birth for the record? Sarah Bowman, 101077. Ms. Boone is seated at council's table, buttressed by her attorneys wearing a black suit and pink blouse. Uh, all members of our jury are present this morning. State, is there anything we need to address before we bring in our panel? Yes, Defense, anything we need to address? Yes, Judge, I intend to uh, introduce these two exhibits that have already been uh, situated. Uh, And there may be additional motions to be addressed at that time. <clears throat> so, yes. I don't have a problem with that. If you want to rest now, subject to those being entered and published, and we can address any motions, the court has reviewed both of the no contact orders. And that way we don't have to do a in and out on, I can call it, we miss Boone at that point in time if we can proceed with the state's um, rebuttal case. Subject to those, the introduction of those two exhibits just mentioned, we would be, the defense would be resting our case at that point. Okay, all right. Okay, I've been advised by the courtroom deputy that juror wearing that 130 C10 cannot stay past 530 today. So, just be advised. We'll use our time accordingly. That was the six. I don't believe so. Give me a moment. I can check. That is an alternate. It's alternate C4. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, defense, do you have any motions? Okay. Uh, just out of abundance of caution, I will read the new or motion to judgment of the riddle. Uh, that's okay. okay, thank you. Any other additional arguments? Just that at this point in time, the standard is whether or not a reasonable prior fact can find the guilty. Thank you. The court recalls the arguments that were made after the conclusion of the state's case, both from the state and the defense. Uh, the court finds that a reasonable juror could make a finding of guilt on the elements of the sole charge and the information beyond and to the exclusion of each and every reasonable doubt. For those reasons, the renewed judgment of the court is denied. Ms. Boone, I have a couple of questions to go over with you, ma'am. You've been previously sworn this morning. And your attorney has indicated that all of the evidence and testimony of all witnesses in your case have been presented to the jury, with the exception of the two no contact orders, pre-marked as AB from June 16, 2019, and the no contact order of June 19, 2019, pre-marked as AC, which once the jury comes back in, he will enter into evidence and produce them to the jury. For their viewing. 
Are there any witnesses that you wanted to call that your attorney failed to call? Is there any evidence that you wanted your attorney to present that any of them failed to present? Are you satisfied with all of your attorneys up and until this point? Is there anything that you would like to bring to my attention at this time? Okay. All right. Um, I did receive the proposed jury instructions this morning. I'll look at them during the lunch hour, and after the state concludes their rebuttal the case, we can proceed with the addressing those. Mr. Beck, yes, sir. Um, this is not the state of red line. I'm not going to discuss it yesterday. I don't know if we'll stand or not. I emailed Ms. Berrios last night. Um, once we got out of court, I'll send them to everyone this morning. Um, just give me a moment, and I'll get those out right now. Is there anyone else? The, the email correspondence that I have is Mr. Owens' email, um, Ms. Andrews' email, Mr. Cacciatore's email. Is there anyone else that may need to be sent to from the defense side? Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Um, can we go ahead and bring in our panel? State. Yes, right. Defense? All right, let's stand and bring in our panel, please. State, you recognize our jury? Yes, Your Honor. In fact, you recognize our jury? Oh, thank you. You all can be seated. Good morning, members of the jury. Welcome back to 12 Alpha in the Orange County Courthouse. Uh, if you could, just raise your hands to confirm that you complied with the court's instructions last night during the break. Thank you. The record will reflect that all jurors have raised their hands. We're going to have a little bit of additional evidence presented by the defense this morning, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Owens, you may proceed, sir. Because at this time, I would move to introduce defense identification exhibit A, B, and evidence. No objection to A, C. What was pre marked as defense A, B will be received into evidence without objection as defense 19. And if you could just identify uh, A, C for the record, sir. At this time, I'd like to move, I would like to move on defense identification A, C. Hearing, hearing no objection from the state, 
uh, what was pre-marked as defense AC will be received into evidence without objection as defense 20. The judge, I would like to publish these to the jury for what allow them to take the time to pass the mail to you. You may proceed. The first is the defense of the 19, which is the jury. Next document is exhibit. <coughs>
Thank you, members of the jury. <clears throat> Mr. Owens, any other additional witnesses, evidence, or testimony, sir? Thank you. Defense or state, are you intending on putting on a rebuttal case? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed, sir. Doctor, good morning. Can you state and spell your name for the record? Thank you. You may be seated now. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good work. Um, I'm employed at Meridian Behavioral Health Care in Gainesville, Florida. And what services do you render there? Um, I'm their chief medical officer. And can you tell the jury um, what your educational background is? Yes. So I graduated with an undergraduate degree at, at the University of South Florida in chemistry. I then attended medical school at um, American University of the Caribbean. I did a residency in uh, psychiatry at um, Connecticut Valley Hospital in Connecticut under the auspices of Yale University. I then came back to Florida and did a fellowship one year in forensic psychiatry at the University of Florida. And since your educational background, um, what have you been doing professionally? Yes. So I'm a licensed uh, physician in Florida. I am board certified in general psychiatry and forensic psychiatry. I was initially employed on faculty at the University of Florida from 1998 through 2015. I retired there um, as the vice chairman of the Department of Psychiatry and the director of the Forensic Institute. I then went to work um, as the chief medical officer at Meridian Behavioral Health Care, which is a community mental health center. Psychiatry? Um, so psychiatry is uh, the treatment of mental health disorders. And what is forensic psychiatry? Forensic psychiatry is um, the uh, interplay of uh, psychiatry and the law, so anywhere where um, psychiatry intersects with uh, legal issues. What is the difference, if any, between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? So a psychiatrist has gone to medical school, uh, where a psychologist has not. And as a licensed physician, are you able to prescribe medication? Yes, I am. In the course of practicing medicine as a psychiatrist, do psychiatrists prescribe medication to treat mental disorders? Yes, we do. And when did you begin your work as a forensic psychologist or psychiatrist as opposed to working at the faculty at the University of Florida, or was that concurrent? Um, in 1996, in the state of Connecticut, uh, while I was uh, doing my training um, at Yale University, I uh, testified for the first time as an expert in the state of Connecticut. And over the course of your career, have you done forensic psychiatric evaluations? I have. 
approximately how many? Uh, thousands of times. And does this include uh, on matters such as competence? Yes, it does. And does this, just explain briefly to the jury, what is that mean, legal competence? So competence is, do they understand the legal process? Um, do they understand who the different players are in the courtroom? Who's on their side? Who's not on their side? What they're charged with? Um, what the possible penalties are? What the possible plea options are? And have you ever done any forensic evaluations about insanity? I have. I've done um, sanity at the time of the crime, and also I've been appointed by the governor um, of the state of Florida to do sanity um, for execution. And have you ever been involved in working as a forensic psychiatrist involved in the subject matter of battered spouse syndrome? I have. Can you describe your experience in that area for the jury? Um, I've been asked to do evaluations um, by the prosecution uh, defense uh, several times with regards to, um, and it's come up in different uh, cases, uh, criminal cases, with regards to um, intimate partner violence. And does all violent uh, episodes within a relationship result in something that we are describing as battered spouse syndrome? No. And I see there is a book in front of you. What book is in front of you? Yes. So this is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, um, and this is the fifth edition textbook, which is the most current edition. Is battered spouse syndrome in there as a diagnosis? No, it is not. And um, where, if anywhere, does it fit into any of the categories within the DSM-5 TR? It would come under um, one of the trauma categories, um, most most specifically under um, most likely post-traumatic stress disorder. Can you describe to the jury what post-traumatic stress disorder is? So this is a disorder that's recognized um, under the DSM um, for individuals who have suffered a traumatic event um, and then they have re-experiencing of the traumatic event. They have um, different symptoms besides re-experiencing such as hyperarousal, um, and also um, avoidance of triggers or, or symptoms, things that would trigger a response to it. Are there any agreed upon criteria within the relevant forensic psych psychiatric, forensic psychological communities about battered spouse? There are. And what would those be? Um, so it's, it's, again, having experienced a trauma. Um, repeatedly um, violence within an intimate uh, relationship and then having symptoms secondary to that, um, avoidance, um, so tiptoeing around, um, trying to avoid uh, recreating the violence. And if a person experiences an environmental stimuli, something happens to them, another person does or says something to them, is there subjective reaction, what is defined as whether there's trauma present or not? I'm not sure I understand the question. Let me rephrase it. You can rephrase. Oh. Um, um, you describe um, there's a difference between experiencing a violent relationship and whether or not that person is going to experience trauma from those behaviors they, they witness and experience. Is that fair? Yes. Um, is it fair to say that an experience that a person has, whether or not that person views it traumatic, is a subjective experience? Yes. Each individual is different, and so um, each individual is going to um, take that experience um, differently. And hypothetically, a couple be involved violent relationship for a number of years, even three and a half years, and battered spouse syndrome not necessarily apply to either or both of them. Yes, that's correct. Can you explain that? Um, so, again, each individual is different. So one individual may develop a, uh, the symptoms of battered spouse syndrome, and, and one individual may not under the same exact circumstances, just depending on, on their makeup um, and what they've experienced in their, um, in their background and their biological makeup. And is there a cycle of violence that is sometimes used uh, to describe battered spouse syndrome? There is. Can you describe that? 
So um, there's uh, the initial, um, there's kind of a tension buildup um, section where um, you feel the kind of tension building up um, and, and the individual can feel kind of the, the incident coming. And then there's the actual incident of violence. Um, and then following the incident of violence, there's a honeymoon phase, what they call the honeymoon phase. And that's the third phase um, where the individual who uh, created the violence uh, attempts to make up uh, to the victim um, and recreate kind of the relationship and pull them back in. And then it starts all over again where you feel the kind of tension start building up again to, to the incidents of violence. Does abuse have to come in the form of physical or sexual violence? No. Can you explain your answer? So it can also come in in ways of of coercion. It can come in ways of control, um, such as financial. So if an individual controls um, another individual financially um, or uh, controls uh, their their ability to uh, drive or go out, um, their ability to be around their other family members or friends kind of isolates them from other individuals, um, controls their ability to work, um, so controls their ability to make money um, or access to funds, um, so they can control them in any number of ways. Is this kind of about the inequitable power dynamic in the relationship? Yes, absolutely. Can a man um, be on the receiving end of emotional or physical or sexual trauma and potentially experience, uh, well, not, not uh, on the potential, on strike that. Can a man be on the receiving end of verbal, uh, harsh words, physical violence, or sexual violence and um, end up having this even more battered stuff? Yes, it crosses all boundaries, and we see it in all types of relationships, whether it be heterosexual or homosexual relationships. Um, we see it cross all boundaries. And can this element of control come from controlling personal items such as identification papers? Yes, absolutely. Can control uh, potentially, hypothetically, come from uh, partner A gifting partner B an item, but still considering that item? partner A's because he or she paid for it, even though it was a gift? Yes. And in this particular case, were you asked to do an evaluation of Sarah Boone? Yes. Do you see Ms. Boone in Portland today? I do. Can you point out where she is and what she's wearing? Um, she's sitting at a table there uh, wearing a dark suit and a pinkish top. Record so far. What date did you have an evaluation of Ms. Boone? Um, it was early in October, I believe October 2nd. And this was at the request of the state of Florida? Yes, it was. Subject to a court order? Yes. And where? Um, who was present for this evaluation? Um, the defense and the prosecution. All right. Tell us about the evaluation of um, Ms. Boone. What do you do first? Um, so I met with Ms. Boone at the jail um, in a conference room. Again, the prosecution was there and her attorney. Um, I met with her for approximately two and a half hours, just under two and a half hours. Um, I introduced myself and uh, explained that the interview would not be confidential, that um, I would be um, coming to court um, if asked to to um, share my opinions. Um, and uh, she agreed to participate. Um, I then um, start out with just general information, so getting to know her, um, date of birth, kind of background information, um, who her parents are, childhood. I go through her educational background, work background, um, her marital background. Um, I go through health, um, psychiatric background. Um, um, any substance use issues. Um, I do a mental status examination. Stop you there. Yeah. Elaborate further on that. So a mental status examination is just um, questions to determine the kind of memory and um, cognition, kind of how their thought process is, um, how they're thinking. Um, are they able to kind of fluidly think through uh, processes? Um, right, go on after that. Uh, and then I... Uh, Transition from there into um, going walking through uh, the incident that happened with her. 
All right. What did she indicate uh, occurred on February 23rd, 2020 to you? Is it all right? I refer to my notes. Just, just if you need them to refresh your memory, please do so. But um, don't read from them. Just let us know. Um, so she had uh, a difficult time recalling what time they actually woke up that day. Um, uh, initially, she said in the morning, and then she said she wasn't even sure that it was in the morning. Um, she said that uh, they both um, wanted to drink, um, but that she uh, asked that they could clean the house first instead, and that they did some vacuuming and cleaning. Um, they had a um, half a bottle of wine left over from the day before that they drank. Um, she felt about four o'clock in the afternoon they drank that out on the back porch. Um, and she described that they had kind of two beach chairs out there and a dark board, um, and that they kind of hung out there um, a lot on the back porch, spent time out there. Um, they did a puzzle um, out there. Um, and completed that, and then did some kind of um, artwork. Um, she uh, felt like he was um, getting frustrated thinking about his life, that he had lost his job. Um, and so she uh, encouraged him uh, to call his daughters. Um, although she knew that, um, that they did not like to talk to him when he was drinking, so I'm not sure um, why she had encouraged them, him to call them at that point um, because they were already drinking Um, and she also at some point encouraged him to call his brother um, because she wanted him to explain to his brother that um, he had pulled her down the stairs the night before um, although that didn't happen Um, he didn't explain that to the brother and um, according to her and um, then um, at some point, they went and got another bottle of wine um, and some cigarettes from the grocery store and continued to drink. Um, and then uh, they were inside the house. And um, then he, I guess, tagged her at some point and said, tag, you're it, which indicated that they were going to play hide and seek. And she said she went upstairs um, and hid in the shower waited for him to come. He never came upstairs. <coughs> Excuse me. And so she eventually came out of the shower to look for him. And as she was coming down the stairs, she said she saw him slipping into a suitcase, which was on the living room floor, <coughs> that they had um, <coughs> put out because they were going to donate it. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> sorry. And um, so she went downstairs and indicated that she had found him and they were kind of laughing and she zipped the suitcase up um, and they continued to laugh, she said at that point. Um, and they were having a good time and laughing and enjoying themselves and, and having a good time. And she said, and then she became angry um, and uh, um, so, and she said she remembered um, what it felt like when he was choking her, and um, she became angry. What did she do after she became angry? Um, I'm going to refer to my notes at this point. Refresh your memory, just uh, yes. put it down and then tell us what you remember. She said um, that she shook the suitcase and that she lost control of it and it flipped. Then what happened? Then she said that he um, stuck two fingers out and her son's baseball bat was sitting there and she picked that up and hit his hand. Then what happened? And then she went upstairs and um, waited um, for him to come upstairs. All right. Alcohol. Can you tell us uh, what you know about the effects as a medical doctor of ethanol or alcohol uh, on the human body? Yes. So it causes um, intoxication, as we all know, um, and it causes disinhibition. 
disinhibition. It works on the frontal lobe of the brain um, and allows us to do things that we will normally do. It disinhibits us. And in the course of your practice, have you ever come across a diagnosis of alcohol abuse disorder? Yes. And what is that? Um, well, alcohol abuse um, is an old disorder. So we used to use alcohol dependence and alcohol abuse. It's now been combined in the DSM-5. Um, in the DSM-5-TR, it's alcohol use disorder. In considering what a patient or a client or somebody that you've been asked to evaluate by a government entity, um, do you take into account that person who's relaying the history to use a consumption of alcohol at the time of the history that they're giving? Yes. Why is that? Um, because, again, it, it affects their behavior um, and their actions. Um, does alcohol have any effect on a person's memory? It can. What, if any, um, relationship is there between acute alcohol use or acute alcohol intoxication and battered spouse? Um, it, it, again, it can affect your memory. It can affect your reactions. It can affect your response to different things. Does the disinhibitory nature of alcohol um, strengthen, weaken, or have no effect on battered spouse? It would depend on each individual, again. Generally speaking, it's important as an evaluator to get as much information as possible before rendering an opinion, such as um, diagnosing somebody with something out of DSM 5 TR or battered spouse. Yes. In this particular case, um, did you require any additional information to reach your conclusion about the relationship between battered spouse syndrome and the events of this evening? I based my opinion on the on the information that I had. Certainly, if there was more information, my opinion would be subject to change. What was your opinion? Um, my opinion was that um, she did not give me um, enough information to diagnose her with post traumatic stress disorder at the time that I evaluated her at the jail. And specifically talking about it. Yes.
members of the jury, thank you so much for your patience. I have a matter I have to discuss with counsel outside of y'all's presence. It may take a little bit more time than just our conference up here, and we don't want to have y'all just hanging out waiting for us to figure out what we're going to do next. So I appreciate your patience. Uh, we're going to excuse you to the deliberation room at this time. Please do not conduct any independent investigation or research as the person, places, things, or charge involved. And do not have any conversations amongst yourselves or anyone else about those things. And we'll bring you back in as often as possible. Thank you. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. Mr. Rowan, see if you can find me that portion of the transcript that we were addressing as to additional opinions and other depositions and anything in Dr. Warner's deposition that you believe we need to address regarding this opinion as it relates to PTSD. Well, Judge, it, was a, it applies to every, every opinion she's going to express. It started on page 37. Line 24, as it relates to serotonin, do you have to do a diagnosis as it relates to her? Then 38, when she started talking about a generalized anxiety disorder, and that she was not sure whether she and serotonin have a generalized anxiety disorder versus if it was just an adjustment disorder being in data. And then she also mentioned in that same answer that Sarah Boone had some narcissistic personality traits and that those were my two major diagnoses. And then I questioned her further about that. She explained to me on line 17 about general anxiety disorder versus the adjustment disorder and that I hadn't had time to fully formulate that opinion of on 21, I need time to go through my notes and think about it and process it. Page. We're still on page 38. 38, line 21. I need time to get it through my notes, think about it, and process it. But I had the other depositions, as you were aware of yesterday, so I had to prepare for those and go through that. So I have, I, I have not had time to process all my notes. I said on line 39, well, doctor, I'm trying not to inconvenience you. You know, we're set for trial October 7th for jury selection. On 6, I anticipate your testimony would be until a little later. So we could discontinue the deposition and then reset it when you've got time to review. Because obviously, I'm not going to want to take your deposition and you have other opinions that are not going to be covered. And then I asked, so Jay asked, what's your position? He said, conducting the discovery after the jury trial starts is completely unacceptable to me. So that's my position. She needs to issue a supplemental report, or if there has become a need for a second deposition, then we can address that. But it would be my position that we need to get this done if the state doesn't have any appellate rights once the jury is formed and jeopardy attached. And I say on line 23 of page 39, well, you obviously understand my position. I'd like to finish the deposition today as well. But if she is holding out, that she may have other opinions and other diagnoses after she has had more time to think, review the paperwork, then obviously that would be an issue. But she said, but if that happens, I can bring that forward. And then you can add to your deposition at that point. If my opinions change after having reviewed further. And I refer to Mr. J. Page 9 of 40, Mr. J says, I think we plow ahead. This is our time with her. Court Porter is prepared to give us a transcript by the end of the week. Something needs to be amended. End of the weekend. End of the weekend. Something needs to be amended. And she can A, ensure a court. B, if we need to take a deposition, an abbreviated deposition on the limited subject matter she is not prepared to testify about to one today, then we can do that. With the notion of halting a deposition set for three hours, and then doing a three hour deposition during trial, especially after jeopardy is attached, is not what the state will do. 
And I was following page 40, line 43. I'm not suggesting that, Mr. J. I'm suggesting what you just said at the very beginning, which is let's finish. But if she has some supplement, then I would want to take a brief second deposition as it relates to any new diagnosis or opinion. Mr. J. would respond on page four, line 4. Okay. What I'm understanding her to say is right now, there has been a previous diagnosis of an adjustment disorder in some of the records. She just needs to review her records to see if she thinks that is the best diagnosis that she would give as opposed to a generalized anxiety disorder. And then the witness says, you since we put that, Mr. J, upside down, you got that back. So we go on, page 42. Line one, up, Mr. Owens. I agree, I agree. And Dr. Warren, just let the state attorney know. Yeah, but, but we're skipping a massive portion of 41. That addresses specifically opinions as it relates to generalized anxiety disorder. Okay, this starts on line 15. So she's saying she has the generalized anxiety disorder, and I'm saying I want to review it more. Because Sarah Boone had disclosed to the doctor that she had been previously diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. And so the, the doctor were was considering that, that mission. But she was saying, I want to review it more to see if I think it's more of an adjustment disorder to being a jail judge, to being in the correctional setting right now, and the stresses that she is under right now as opposed to a generalized environment. So Mr. J says, I'm on 22. Okay, so on this topic, if something new comes up, we can address it. But if you have other topics to dispose her on, then I suggest we go on. And then what? Page 42, line one, that's when I say, I agree, I agree, and Dr. Warner, just let the state attorney know. I know that you may be, you know, we are on short time. If if you do review your notes over the weekend or whatnot, if you formulate any other opinions, just let the state attorney know, and I will address it. We'll address it. We will address it. Line seven, the witness, Dr. Warner says, absolutely. And then, You want me to continue reading, or if there's portions you want to highlight for me, I mean, I have the transcript. I'm following along with that you. Was, that was the general understanding that we had about all of diagnoses, all opinions that she may have, and so she starts talking about the mental status exam that she gave her, and then she. Page 43, line A, she said narcissistic, she said she has narcissistic personality disorder traits. Or I asked that question. That's how she is. She goes through a little bit of that. And then, uh, she, paraphrasing, she talks about the grandiose component, the criteria that she met. And then on page 45, I asked her, what other criteria? Line one. It tend to indicate that she was a narcissist. And the answer, I have to order, I didn't say that she was. I said that she has narcissistic traits. And that was the example. That was Excuse me, Gregor, I'll be looking at I saw this back in. I'm, I'm very, I understand that's what the depot reflects, but the non-objection which led to objection pertains to an opinion specifically about post-traumatic stress disorder. At this time, no opinion is being referenced, nor does the call of the question pertain to narcissistic personality traits or a diagnosis of narcissism the question pertains to PTSD. All right, page 46. Line one question, okay? Do you feel like she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder? Line three, answer. She didn't give me criteria with regards to that. She discussed having fear and anxiety of his family. He feared that they would come into the jail or have someone else come to the jail proper. She talked about that. And she spoke about, you know, having recollections, remembering abuse from George during the evaluation. 
question 13, line 13, from 46. But you don't believe that she suffers from post traumatic stress disorder, in your opinion? Answer line 15. No. I would have to look through, back through my notes, to see if she fully met the criteria. Question 117. Can you explain why you don't think she suffers from post traumatic stress disorder? Answer line 19. No. I didn't say one way or the other. I would have to look back through my notes for that. Line 21, question, is that something that you may, in the future, give an opinion about after some time reflecting and reviewing your notes? Line 24, answer, I may. Number 25, question, okay, and that's something you will let the lawyers know about if that changes? Answer, line 2 of page 47, yes. That's specific to the post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. So at the time of this deposition, when I asked her specifically... So what's the legal objection? What are the legal grounds of the objection? I would not take that deposition, Judge. When she said, I have not at time sufficiently to answer these questions, these diagnoses, these opinions, if this wasn't set for a definitive date, if you had already told me it's not going to continue, I would not, I would refuse to take that definition. But under the promises from the state, what are the legal what are the legal grounds of your objection? I'm familiar with the background. I'm familiar with the time frame. I'm familiar with all the dates and the depots and the coordination and everything we had to do to get this all teed up before trial. What are the legal grounds of your objection? I understand the backdrop. I don't. I don't know if there's a legal ground other than we had an agreement as attorneys, as parties, that I would be notified, change of opinion, and I would be allowed to take the second. That's the only thing I know to object to, okay. because I was not given that opportunity, which was an agreement to the response. Okay. I don't appreciate the indications that they're making. Um, what I would proffer with this witness is, we spoke yesterday, I asked her if she had any change in her opinion about any of the diagnoses, she said no, and I just, I asked, well then, my position, my understanding of her position is that it doesn't matter whether she had PTSD or not, because what Ms. Boone said at the time was that she zipped Mr. Torres up into the suitcase, they were both laughing. And once he was already secured in the suitcase, she became angry and then did all the things that she did. My expected answers from the doctor based on a very brief conversation yesterday and this morning was that if I asked her whether or not PTSD or BSS had anything to do uh, with this particular uh, case, that her answer would be, it doesn't matter because of what she stated happened. I'm not asking her about her diagnosis of PTSD. I'm not going to be going into narcissism. I'm not going to go into whether or not she ever delineated the difference between adjustment disorder or anxiety. Because my understanding of what she told me was that none of this matters. None of this matters because of what she said to us during the evaluation. But the question was, and I may have to ask Madam Court Reporter, Court Reporter to read it back, but my memory of what the question was is, have you formulated an opinion? With regard to PTSD. And my expected answer was it doesn't matter because of what she said during the evaluation. Okay. Unfortunately, that was not the answer that came from the witness. The answer was that's that's not not no. Attorneys. Well, I'm not casting blame. I'm just right, we're going back over what was asked and what was said. Okay. Judge, yes. so, and that's his position that post traumatic stress disorder that does it. By this case, and that he, I'm sure, reflected his opinion to the expert. But that doesn't mean that that's my opinion that post traumatic stress does not apply. Okay, that's irrelevant to the purposes of this argument. Okay, their discussions didn't feel like it didn't apply. Okay, as an officer of the court, he just told me he spoke to the expert yesterday and the opinions hadn't changed. And the opinion that was offered at the deposition was, I'm not sure. 
And based on what he had proffered as to what he expected the answer to be, the answer was not, it was not going to be any different. It was a, it's not applicable. It doesn't matter because of what she told me. That's unfortunately not the answer that was given. So what is it that you're asking me to do at this, at this time, Mr. Ellis? I'm asking, I don't know if we need to proffer the entire testimony of this witness, this opinions, diagnoses of apparent change. I think I have a right to take a second deposition before she testifies. What other opinions, Mr. J, if any, are going to be offered by Dr. Warner? Can I proper? Yes. All right. You've been present for all this hearing. Yes, doctor. Uh, am I misrepresenting any of our conversations? No. All right. And so <laughs> if I ask you um, if battered spouse syndrome or PTSD has any relationship to the facts of the case as the defendant relayed them to you, what would be your answer? That it's not related to the incident as she reported it. And if I ask you, therefore, if there were any prior instances of violence, would that change your opinion? What would your answer be? No. And if you reviewed any other materials or materials, would that change your opinion based on what she told you about what happened that evening? No. Judge, number one, she's given a legal opinion. Number two is discovery violation. What is the legal opinion? That post traumatic stress disorder doesn't apply in this case. Dr. Harvard testified it did, and that's no expert opinion. I would like to have known that, and that was going to be her opinion before today. That's not a change in testimony. No. Where, where is that a change in, in deposition? I I'm, no, 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 no. This is a a a 87 page transcript. You're objecting. You have the burden to establish your objection. Give me a minute. I'll read through it and find where I asked her. I mean, this isn't the first time I've looked at this deposition. The state provided it to me when we had the hearing on whether or not battered spouse would be permitted. The state provided specific highlights for me to look at. At no point in time did the defense say, look at this, look at this, look at this, in her deposition when we had that hearing. So other than what's being provided to me right now and what's been testified to this morning, I don't know what opinions she has. All I know in coming into today is what the basis of her opinion was, specifically with regard to any of the statements that Ms. Boone had provided, which is the whole crux of the state's motion to prevent battered spouse from coming into evidence. Judge, if you look at page 66, line 20, let me know when you're here. Hang on. Yes, sir. Page 66, line 20, question. Okay, so other than the couple of hours that you intend to maybe reflect on your notes and anything else, any other work you intend to do on this case? Answer 23, no, sir. Not that I'm aware of. Line 24, question. And you've expressed all your opinions, at least generally today. Answer, page 67, line 1. Yes, sir. Question. Uh, that I go into, please. And on 67, line 7, question. Just double dog short. You admit that you have no other opinions other than the ones you've expressed here today. Line 10, answer, that I've been asked about. If I'm asked something else, that I'll offer it. Number 12, question, and you've been provided all the resources you need to rely on and express your opinions. Line 14, answer, I have based an opinion on the resources that I've been provided. If there's other things out there to be provided that may or may not change my opinion. <clears throat> I believe it's a discovery violation because I should have been notified that we could have changed it. And we had an agreement that I was going to be allowed to retake the deposition and not be ambushed. What new opinions 
are different based on what Mr. J proffered the testimony is going to be. I have to ask Madam Clerk if you need the question and the answer to the experts that's long enough. Madam Clerk, or Madam Clerk, were you able to reread the portion of the proffer as to what Mr. J asked the witness? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Of course. <clears throat> Court's going to step off for a moment while uh, Madam Court Porter is able to provide that brief. Just, just. Oh. All right, we're back on the record. Case number 2020 CF 2603, State of Florida versus Sarah Boone. State. Defense. Ms. Boone is seated at council's table wearing the same clothing from this morning. Madam Court Porter, have you had the opportunity to review the transcript as to the proffer of Dr. Warner's testimony? Okay, you may proceed. Hi, uh, Mr. J. Question. You've been present for all this hearing, yes, doctor? Answer, yes. Question. Am I re- misrepresenting any of our conversation? Answer, no. Question. All right. So if I ask you if Patrick's past syndrome or PTSD has any relationship to the facts of this case and the defendant related them to you, what would be your answer? Question. And it's not related to the entity that she reported it. Question, okay. And if I ask you, therefore, if there are any prior instances, instances of violence, would that change your opinion? What would your answer be? Answer, no. Question, if you reviewed any other materials or materials, would that change your opinion based on what you told me about the past that you? Answer, no. Question, all right, that's it. I don't think that's the very beginning before I check. What was asked was to read back the proffer. Yeah. I, I thought I was I thought I was asking to go back to the very beginning when the question was asked and the response and I object. The what was specifically asked was to to the proffer, because the question before the court was whether the proffered opinions are at odds with what was testified to during the course of the deposition. There's the question that was asked and the answer that was given affirmatively provided an opinion as to PTSD. I think Mr. J admits that. Mr. J has advised the court it's not what he was hoping the answer would be. The answer was supposed to be something different as identified in the problem, which is why I had Madam Court Porter read back So the question Mr. Owens posed to you is whether the proper opinions that Madam Court Reporter just read back to us are different 
than what was provided in the deposition. Yes. How so? She tended to explain in the proper some legal reason why it did not apply in her opinion. That was not discussed in any way in the deposition. Okay. My question is specific as to opinions. Her opinions were as to battered spouse syndrome or post-traumatic stress disorder and their relationship to the case based on the defendant's responses. The answer is not related to the incident as the defendant reported. Those are the opinions, as I understand them based on the problem, as it relates to battered spouse syndrome and post-traumatic stress disorder. I think I'd refer to page 46 on 13 with the question, but you don't believe that she suffers from post traumatic stress disorder in your opinion? On 15, the answer is no. I would have to look through, back through my notes to see if she fully met that criteria. Question 17, can you explain why you don't think she suffers from post traumatic stress disorder? I went to the answer no. I did the same one with the other. I have to look back through my notes for that. Question number 21. Is that something that you may, in the future, give an opinion about after some time reflecting and reviewing your notes? 24. I'm there. 25. Okay. And that's something you will let the lawyers know about if that changes. So page 47. On two, yes. That's fundamentally, substantially, and materially different from what she's testified to give us post traumatic stress in the proffer? Mm -hmm. In the proffer? Mm -hmm. She's not rendering an unless I misunderstood the proffer, she's not rendering an opinion on PTSD and whether or not Miss Boone suffers from it. She led me to believe that she was trying to decide whether or not Sarah Boone suffered. Post traumatic stress. Now, in the proper, they're, they're claiming that post traumatic stress does not apply. I don't know what the initial question was, but we haven't had that written back. So, what's going on? The question was asked. I believe she rendered an opinion. Um, I, again, like the fact that we read back. What the initial question was, what the response was, because it did. I know I objected. I can't even remember it now. But I know I objected because I knew it was speaking system. You asked to approach, and then you explained. That question was in, it was not something that was framed in the deposition. Multiple times I asked you for a legal objection. And it wasn't until right before or right after we sent the jury out that you provided some legal objection. Now, it, Madam, if you want Madam Court Porter to go back and read the question that led us to where we are right now in the answer, I'm totally on board with that. I have memory of what it was, but nothing okay. like. Does that kind of first question of the proffer if BSS? Let's just reread the entire process, just so that it's clear, soup to nuts, alpha to the omega, what the proffer was. Madam Court Porter, if you could be so kind. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mr. J. Question. You've been present for all of this period. Yes, Doctor. Answer. Yes. Question. Am I misrepresenting any of our conversations? Answer. No. Question. All right. So if I ask you, does it cause syndrome or PTSD have any relationship to the facts of this case that we just have to convey them to you? What would be your answer? Answer. That it's not related to the incident as she reported it. Question. Okay. 
that by asking, therefore, if there are any higher instances of the virus, would that change your opinion? What would your answer be? Answer, no. And question, and if you reviewed any other materials or materials, would that change your opinion based on what you're talking about? What happened next? Answer, no. Question, all right. And then if she could go back to the initial. Oh, I was waiting on you. Please go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Pay no attention to me. <clears throat> go ahead. My understanding is it was the question and the answer right before Mr. Owens asked to approach. Question. What was your opinion? Answer. My opinion, opinion was that she did not give Diagnosed her with post traumatic stress disorder at the time that I evaluated her. Can you read that for me one more time, please? The, both the question and the answer. Question What was your opinion? Answer My opinion was that she did not give me enough information to diagnose her with post traumatic stress disorder at the time that I evaluated her. Jeff. Yeah. <coughs> Question, and in this particular case, would you require any additional information to reach your conclusion on the relationship between battered spouse syndrome and the events of this evening? Answer, I base my opinion on the information that I had. Certainly, there was more information on the inputs of subject to change. Question, what was your opinion? Sure. Number one, that question and answer 
she gave a different opinion than what she gave in her deposition, which, subject to the agreement we had, I should have noticed. Number two, with the proffer, it seems that she's going to find that post traumatic distress disorder did not apply to the facts as related by Sarah Lennon. That is an opinion that I needed to know about. And I asked throughout this deposition at the very end, so General, if your opinions have any new opinions or anything new that differs from what you've said here today, please notify the lawyers of what's to that effect. Well, it's an evidentiary issue. I've got a right to be prepared for the trial through discovery to know what the witnesses are going to go on. And this is a discovery violation based on two things. One, her initial answer to the question that I objected to, and then two, the proffer is a new thing. It's a discovery violation. I asked that the witness, witness be stricken. Any response? Judge, I think it's clear from my original question that the intent that I stated was the intent of my question, yet the answer that I intended to get was what the question was intended to elicit the As far as the discovery violations and continued attacks, I'm just not, cons- I'm not, I'm not convinced he understands what the answer means or what it's going to be. The answer isn't going to be this room didn't have PTSD. Hence, therefore, battered spouse syndrome doesn't apply in this case. Mm-hmm. What I believe she's going to say, what I believe I've been saying she's going to say, based on our conversations, was irrespective of whether anybody believes Ms. Boone had BSS or PTSD, it is irrelevant because of what Ms. Boone told her happened at the time of the event. That is not a discovery violation. She was specific in saying, if you have any questions you want to ask me, I'll give you an opinion. That is exactly what she said on page 67 of the deposition in response to a question that starts at line 7. Question, just double dog sure. You admit that you have no other opinion than the ones you expressed here today. Answer, that I've been asked about. If I'm asked about something else that I'll offer. They didn't ask about the interplay of the facts with uh, the <coughs> relevance of the syndrome. That's them, not the state. Any other argument? How did you give me that deposition? How did you- I specifically asked you, Mr. Owens, to point out for me what? what, excuse me, I specifically asked for you to point out specific portions of the deposition that are at odds with either A, the opinion that was previously given, or B, what was proper. You have provided me pages 45 and 46 of the deposition relating to specific opinions on whether or not Ms. Boone suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. Are there any other portions of the depot that you would like to point out for me? I am not going to read an 87-page deposition and continue to wait or waste our jurors' time as we try to find a solution for the situation that is now before us. If there are specific portions of this deposition that are at odds, the opinions been proffered and or provided so far. I would ask you to direct my attention to them. Well, the ones that I other than what you've already identified. The ones that I expressed that just the understanding that we had that she in the pages that I had talked about previously here today, pages that I referred to about our agreement that she was going to let me know that there were opinions that she had in addition to her opinions that she gave me. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Any other argument, Mr. Jack? Okay, thank you very much. All right, the court has had the opportunity to listen to the proffers read back by Madam Court Reporter, Re- the read back of the opinion that was previously offered, um, the portions of the deposition which have been, been highlighted by the defense specifically pertain to opinions by the defendant as to whether or not the defendant suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. That opinion is not being offered. The opinion pertains to the relationship of battered spouse syndrome and or PTSD as it relates to the facts of the case as the defendant has relayed them to you and that they are not related. However, the deposition is identified by the uh, defense, identifies that 
if there were any additional opinions, that there would be notification. So the court at this point in time, as there has been an alleged discovery violation in accordance with binding precedent by the 6th District Court of Appeal, which is binding on this trial court, in Young v. State, 369, Southern 3rd, 1243, at pinpoint 1248, the court is now going to conduct a discovery violation or a discovery Richardson hearing. State any other arguments with regard to the elements of a Richardson hearing. No, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other arguments with regard to the elements of a Richardson hearing, Mr. Ellens? No, other than I understood she did give the opinion about post that express. Not an issue, too. Okay. All right, the court, again, reviewing the proffer and the opinion, finds that. The state's violation was inadvertent based on the proffer by the state, which was agreed to by Dr. Werner as to the conversation they had last night, as to the opinions and whether or not that they had changed. However, I do find that that violation is substantial with regard to the opinions based on the testimony in Dr. Werner's deposition that any other additional opinions would be notified to the defense. As it relates to the third category, the uh, effect on the defendant properly prepared for trial. Uh, although the questions in the deposition as highlighted by the defense so far are do not address the opinions being currently offered, I do find that it had some impact on the ability um, for the defendant to properly prepare for, for trial. As it relates to the opinion that was previously provided um, as read back, Specifically, my opinion was that she did not give enough information to diagnose her with PTSD at the time of the evaluation at the jail. What is your position, if any, with regard to that opinion now that the jury has heard it? Mr. Owens. Because my question is, do you want it struck? On that issue, we'll, we'll address it on cross examination. So you are you do not want uh, it to be struck, and you do not want a curative instruction. Well, I'm going to question her about post traumatic stress, so it's going to come out um, through my cross from the deposition about what she said, and it's inconsistent with what she said here today. So I'm going to want to rely on that question on that age. Okay. All right, Miss Boone. You, have you been paying attention to the questions and answers and the readbacks of both the proper testimony and the opinion testimony? Yes. And are you on board with the strategy not to seek to strike that opinion? Yes. Thank you. With regard to the proper testimony, I'm going to permit now in open court, and I will oversee the deposition for you, Mr. Owens, to inquire as to those opinions. With regard to the proffered opinions, the court will oversee a deposition now, and you may proceed. Yes. With regard to the proffered opinions, and I believe that will provide a cure for the discovery violation under the Richardson violation based on your uh, request not to strike the prior opinion. And since you're going to utilize that on cross, I find that the prejudice is limited. But with regard to the new opinions, I will give you the opportunity to depose her now, curing the prejudice at that point in time. Um, you may proceed. Dr. Warren. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. At some point, the state attorney notified you that you were to come today. Correct. Did you and the state attorney have a discussion about your testimony? Yes. When was that discussion? Last night. So y'all talked on the phone last night? Yes. Have y'all had any discussions since the phone conversation last night? Uh, briefly this morning. And uh, how long was the phone conversation? Um, less than five minutes. How long was the face-to-face -face conversation? Less than five minutes. Did y'all discuss that your testimony would be that you did not have enough information that you gathered from Sarah Boone to form an opinion as to whether or not she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder? I'm sorry? Yes, that my opinion hadn't changed, that I didn't have any information. Okay. And did did he 
did the state attorney speak to you about that it didn't matter whether you had an opinion if you didn't feel like the facts that Sarah Boone had given you as it relates to um, the facts and issue in this case, you did if, if you didn't feel like post traumatic stress even applied, then you could answer that way. Correct. That was my opinion. Correct. But did he did he present that to you initially for you to form an opinion about it? No, my opinion was that it didn't apply because of the um, the way that she described the the um, the incident. To- was that your opinion back when I took your deposition? Yes. When did you form that opinion? When she described the incident. Why didn't you let us know that was your opinion at the time that I took your deposition? Do you remember me asking you? Any other opinions that you may have as it relates to this case? I understand that, but you, you're saying you formed that opinion prior to the deposition, correct? Yes. The state attorney and I discussed that on the way out of the jail, it doesn't matter that. After the deposition? No, sir. After the evaluation. Okay. On the way out of the jail. All right. And I asked you. Were there any other opinions that you may express at trial after you had discussed that with the state attorney prior to the deposition? Is that correct? Yep. And so you were aware that I wanted, I didn't want to be ambushed at trial. I wanted to know any and all opinions that you may be expressing in the Sarah Boone case. I didn't know what specific information you wanted, sir. That's why you had a deposition. I answered your questions. I don't know what all information you want me to, to provide to you. So because I didn't ask you specifics, you felt like you didn't have to respond specifically. Yes, sir. I answered all of your questions. And as I said, I'm happy to answer any questions that, that I'm asked. I don't know what questions you want me to answer. But, but you know that this was a central issue in the case. Did you not? Yeah. I your think. opinion, your opinion yeah. is relating to a central issue in this case. Correct. You're aware Sarah Boone's on trial for murder. Right. And you had this opinion when I was taking your deposition and I was asking you specifics about any opinions that you may be expressing in the trial of Sarah Boone and you did not disclose it. Well, I told you that I would answer any questions that were asked of me. I have a number of opinions. I know that I don't feel that she's suffering from major depression disorder. I didn't offer that opinion either. Um, I have a number of, of opinions. That's all for you. Mr. J, anything else? I'm just making sure you want to inquire. This is your opportunity, Ms. Rollins. Because that was more just about inquire about what this is your opportunity to inquire. You are conducting a deposition. This is your opportunity and your only opportunity to cure any prejudice that we've identified with regard to those proffered opinions as it relates to the relationship of battered spouse syndrome and or post traumatic stress disorder as proffered. The problem is now, Judge, is I've got my expert and I we weren't aware of you know how. In these type cases, the experts are allowed to listen to the testimony of the other experts and read the depositions of the other experts. Um, Dr. Warner, will you give them the opportunity to read Dr. Harper's deposition? I want. And that's standard operating procedure in these type cases. And now um, I'm taking a deposition on the fly. And then I, I have had a chance to speak with my expert about those opinions and whether or not uh, that would change her opinion. Um, it just puts me in a very difficult situation, but I'm, if, I'm, if I'm ordered to continue the deposition, I'll leave. That's your, dis- your, that's your decision. It's not an order. I'm just saying that this is the opportunity to cure that Richardson issue. You asked previously to strike the expert. I am disinclined to do that. Case law says that is an extraordinary remedy one which I am not going to permit. Dr. Warren, you realize you're in a courtroom. Yes. And we're waiting on the jury on the trial of Sarah Ben. Yes. Are there any other opinions that you intend to express in this trial 
that you have not disclosed to me in the deposition or you have not disclosed here today under oath. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are you refusing to answer my question about any other opinions that you intend to express here today as it relates to Sarah Broom, who is on trial for murder in the second degree? I'm going to check the, the catch-all, vague question that Mr. Owens wants to ask this expert witness about any and all opinions she may or may not have. 99 out of 100 attorneys will come in here and say that's not how you do that. You have to ask the same questions. Anytime you ask a question like that of expert, the expert is always going to say, please ask me a specific question. And that's what she did then. That's what she did now. It's, it's unfair and vague to ask them and tell me everything. Judge. Yes, sir. We're in the middle of a trial. She's fixing to testify. She's had conversations with the state attorney. She knows what she's going to be asked in forms of opinions that she's going to express. That's why she's here. They help the jury understand the science that relates to the law and express opinions. I mean, for me to ask, we're playing hide the ball here? In the middle of a trial, I disagree that there's any hiding of the ball. There's been a problem. It's been read multiple times. As to the scope of the opinions regarding to battered spouse syndrome and post traumatic stress disorder and its relationship to the facts of the case as the defendant represented them. And the answer is they are not relatable to the incident as relayed by the defendant. That is the opinion that have been proffered. Right, can I continue with my deposition? Yes, sir. Dr. Werner, do you recall expressing? that you wanted more time to reflect as to whether or not Sarah Boone suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes, that I was going to review my notes to see if I had enough information in there to support or negate that. Tom, what additional information would you need for you to express an opinion that she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder? So she did not give me information regarding um, the presence of intrusive symptoms. She didn't give me Information regarding persistent avoidance. Um, she didn't give me um, information regarding alterations in arousal or reactivity. Anything else? No. Would you agree you failed to ask her those questions? I asked her if there was any other important information that she felt like she needed to share with me at the end of my evaluation. Okay. She said no. So a catch all question. Correct. Were there any other Personality disorders, isn't that what you do as a psychiatrist? You, you diagnose an opinion, uh, express opinions about whether people suffer from personality disorders? Right. Are there any other personality disorders that you have formed opinions about Sarah Boone that you intend to express? No. So, narcissism, you did not find. I um, found narcissistic traits. In terms of your opinion that she suffers from narcissistic personality disorder. No, sir, I said narcissistic traits. Okay. So you don't have an opinion that she suffers from narcissistic personality disorder. Correct. She suffers, she has, she displays narcissistic traits. You express an opinion that she suffers from alcohol use syndrome. Alcohol use disorder. Alcohol use disorder. Correct. Is that still your opinion? Yes, it is. Anxiety disorder. Is it your opinion she suffers from the anxiety disorder? No. You recall in your deposition indicating that she you felt like she suffered from either anxiety disorder or adjustment disorder. That's correct. And you changed that opinion now? Um, I have. Uh, I'm leaning towards a, a adjustment disorder secondary to her uh, situation. So you haven't formed an opinion as to whether or not she suffers from general anxiety disorder or adjustment disorder.
Do you agree that she suffered from trauma as it relates to the domestic violence history that she expressed to you from the intimate partner violence with George Torres? Yes, as reported by her. Yes. Do you have anything to dispute that? No. In your opinion, does she suffer from any form of psychosis? No. Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from acute stress disorder? No. Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from intimate partner violence? Yes, I think that there is um, history to, uh, to of a, the volatile relationship between the two of them. Because of that, do you believe that she, Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? Uh, she may be the criteria for that. May. So, it's possible? Yes. That, is that your opinion? Yes. Definitively, you can't say? Um, she, there's a history of her having that. So you agree she suffered from battered spouse syndrome? Yeah. I believe we've covered anxiety disorder, narcissism, battered spouse syndrome, and alcohol use disorder. Are there any other opinions that you intend to express as it relates to that or any other psychological condition of Sarah Boone. That's all the questions I have. Any other arguments at this time? No judge, just one of them. Okay, all right. Uh, the court has conducted its Richardson hearing and made its findings. The court has previously identified will not strike the expert as that remedy is quite draconian, and I will not do so based on the um, questions that were asked as highlighted uh, by the defense uh, and the opinions that were offered. Uh, the specific areas for which opinions are being offered were not inquired into, but the deposition did leave it open that. I'll ask, I'll ask questions about any other opinions that I'm asked about or anything else that I'm asked during the course of the trial, specifically page 59, 22 through 26 on 1, page 60, lines 11 through 25. So in the abundance of caution, the court has permitted that in-court deposition. Anything else, sir? State, anything else? All right, let's go ahead and bring back in our panel and we can... Before we bring it back in, may I approach uh, Mr. Cacciatore on a related matter? Does it need to be on the record? Or okay, go ahead. We can see that uh, Detective Thompson, Detective Well, not testifying against. They're still under death subpoena. I asked. I asked Mr. Henderson to do that on Captain Lynch. He said, "I were not in our in our defense, our correct defense. Is there a possibility that based upon the information the state is going to present today, this afternoon?" That we may want to receive or seek through the server level uh, and possibly through these witnesses. They are under subpoena. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just finished the talk here. I just noticed your presence. Out of abundance of caution, I think that um, we need to clarify for the record that they're here. This What's your base? Well, we're off the record. There's no jury here. It's fine. You all stay with me. What's the basis for your server level? We don't know because I don't know what the state's going to place in rebuttal. But that doesn't answer my question. What's the legal basis of a server rebuttal? Additional discretion as to the fairness of the proceeding that the defendant uh, pursued. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Cacciatore? No, Your Honor. Okay. The rule sequestration is still in full force in effect. Detectives Lowen and Capsule, good morning. I'm going to ask you to be excused from our proceedings and not view them, not have any communication amongst yourselves about testimony that has been previously given or any questions that have been asked or answered, and just keep your separate ways as it relates to this case.
and any questions or testimony that you intend to give, may give, or have to give, and then comply with any instructions that were provided to you by the state regarding the rule of sequestration. Thank you very much. Anything else, Mr. Owens, we need to address? Okay. Anything else, State? No. All right, let's bring back in our jury. You can continue your inquiry, sir. State to recognize our jury. Yes, Your Honor. That's to recognize our jury. I thank you. Seated. Members of the jury, thank you again for your patience. We had some issues I had to address with counsel outside of your presence, and we're going to continue the um, state's rebuttal case this morning. Again, if you could please just raise your hands to confirm that you complied with the court's instructions during the break. The record reflect all hands have been raised. Mr. Jay, you may continue your inquiry, sir. State would move to strike the last response as non responsive. Approach. Your objections overruled. All right. Irrespective of whether anybody has an opinion of whether Ms. Boone was suffering from PTSD or BSS, irrespective, based on your evaluation of Ms. Boone and what she relates to you about the facts of the case, does PTSD or BSS have any relation? Overruled. No. And what particular part of her statements about the incident is that? Um, the whole part where she's describing um, the part about playing hide and seek and that they were having a good time, they were laughing, um, when he got in the suitcase, when she found him, they were enjoying themselves, she zipped him up, they were still laughing, you know, having a good time. Um, all of that isn't consistent with um, her having a feeling of she had imminent risk, or imminent, you know, there was an imminent risk of harm that she would need to protect. Yes.
members of the jury, I have something I've got to discuss with counsel outside of y'all's presence. Same instruction. Please don't conduct any independent investigation or research on person, places, thing, or charge involved. You don't have any conversations among yourselves or anyone else with regard to that. And we'll bring you back in as promptly as possible. Thank you. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Court Porter, when you're ready. Yes, ma'am. Just go from, read it from the question, answer, question, objection. It's just have the, we can buttress it. Go ahead. Hi, Mr. J. Question. All right. Irrespective of whether anybody has an opinion about whether this really is something from PTSD or DSM, irrespective of that, based on their evaluation of this bill, what should be laid to you about the facts of this case? Does PTSD or DSS have any relation? Is there always objection to ask and answer? The court overruled the witness? No. Question, and what particular part of her statements about the incident is that? Answer, the whole part when she's describing the part of the dog playing, having a seat, here, having a good time, here, the last week. She found him in six minutes. When she found him, they were enjoying themselves. She zipped him. She zipped him. They were still laughing, having a good time. All of that is consistent with her having a feeling that she had imminent risk or imminent risk of harm. Any other argument, Mr. Owens? That it made the promise to the jury that's a decision whether or not she had an imminent risk of harm or received an imminent threat. 
is a question for the jury. This expert can express opinions on science, on medicine, but not on the ultimate issue of fact and explain to the jury that this defense doesn't qualify. That you should rely on me as an expert, not to be able to make the decision for you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, by telling you that under the facts expressed to me by Sarah Bender, she was not perceived as a threat at the time. Responsible. It's not an objectionable opinion. It's not the opinion of the ultimate opinion. It's the opinion of the applicability of a particular set of evidence that the testimony of the defense is offered. Um, called battered spouse and then kind of help explain a portion of the justifiable use of that divorce or non divorce. She's not up there saying this woman was unjustified in doing. She did. She was not saying um, that justifiable use of force doesn't apply. What she is saying is, in her opinion, based on the facts that she relies on, given by the defendant herself just a couple of weeks ago, that this particular set of testimony and evidence that has been offered to their expert, Dr. Harper, um, doesn't apply. This is no different than one expert coming in and saying, well, yeah, you, you can know that the defendant was sane at the time, despite the mental illness, because he ran from his police, he did, he concealed that evidence, so on and so forth. And therefore, because of those facts, insanity doesn't apply. The defense expert may come in and say, well, you know, insanity does apply because my client, after stabbing her mother to death, uh, called 911, speaking unintelligibly and singing, and then reading the office at the floor with a pair of knives, and wouldn't drop the knives, and was incoherent for 12 hours after the defense. Therefore, based on those facts, the expert says, well, the same thing does apply. It's not becoming a lawyer, it's not becoming a juror, it's explaining a particular type of expert testimony. Um, and it just happens to, to disagree with Dr. Harper. Dr. Harper came in and said that BSS does apply and that he's in constant fear. The reason she's in constant fear is because of all the past episodes and whatnot. It's the permissible testimony. Any other argument, Mr. Owens? That's totally wrong. He claims, the prosecutor claims that Dr. Harper came in and said BSS does apply. That's true. But he just got through saying and trying to get the witness to say BSS is it, 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 it's not to be regarded. Post traumatic stress is not to be regarded. It doesn't even come into play. Post traumatic stress disorder, Bader Strauss syndrome, does not even come into play because at the time she was facing, according to this witness, no imminent risk of harm. Therefore, you can discount everything you hear, ladies and gentlemen, of the jury about Bader Strauss syndrome. How does that have anything to do with whether or not it's an improper legal opinion under 91.73? It is. It's the ultimate issue of fact in this case, because self-defense has been alleged by the defense. The issue for this jury is whether or not Sarah Boone had the right to defend herself with force, deadly force or non-deadly force, based on her beliefs and impressions at the time, whether they were reasonable. Under the jury instructions, under the special jury instructions that are going to be applied for battered spouse syndrome, under the jury instructions, under justifiable use of deadly force, whether her perceptions about threat is imminent and whether it was appropriate or reasonable to act the way she did. This expert is trying to say that she was not facing imminent risk of harm at the time. Thank you both for your arguments. Court is going to overrule your objection, find that it is not an ultimate issue of fact as addressed by 90.703. The court specifically relies on Dinkins versus State 976, Southern Second 660 at pinpoint 661. In that case, a psychologist testifies in, in, that, in the instant case in Dinkins. The psychologist's opinions were not legal conclusions. The psychologist did not opine on the defendant's guilt or innocence. Rather, the psychologist opined only as to whether the victim was, quote, mentally defective, end quote, and capable of consent to intercourse. 
although the opinions did go to ultimate issues in the case, Florida case law, or Florida law, excuse me, expressly, expressly provides that an expert witness may render such opinion, see section 90.703 Florida statutes, which provides that testimony in the form of an opinion or inference otherwise admissible is not objectionable because it includes an ultimate issue to be decided by the trier of fact. Thus, the jury had the power to accept or reject the opinions and was not bound by such. For those reasons, your objection is overruled. It's not important what I was going to ask you to repeat the question and the answer. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Let's, he's going to have Madam Court Reporter read back the question and the answer, and then he is going to have no other questions for this witness. I object. Basis. He was asked to answer. Overruled. There was a pending objection. And allow the state to re ask it so it's clear based on that objection. Judge, it's 11 30. I'm going to be at least an hour or one. <laughs> we're going to begin your cross examination after we're done with the after the, defense, uh, the state advises the jury in open court. Uh, there are no more questions. Let's go ahead and bring back in our panel. Excuse me. State to recognize our jury. Yes, sir. To recognize our jury. You may be seated. Thank you. That was the jury again. If you could raise those hands. Juror number two, back right. He gets it. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Record reflect all hands have been raised. State, you may proceed. <clears throat> it's 1130. I'm going to be at least an hour or one. He's in constant fear. The reason she's in constant fear is because of all the past episodes of the any other argument, Mr. Owens? Totally wrong. Claims the prosecutor claims that Dr. Parker came in and said BSS does apply. That's true. But he just got through saying and trying to get the witness to say BSS is it, it it's not to be regarded. Post traumatic stress is not to be regarded. It doesn't even come into play, post traumatic stress disorder. Badger Strauss syndrome does not even come into play because at the time she was facing, according to this witness, no imminent risk of harm. Therefore, you can discount everything you hear, ladies and gentlemen, Curry, about Badger Strauss syndrome. How does that have anything to do with whether or not it's an improper legal opinion under 90.73? It is. It's the ultimate issue of fact in this case. Because self-defense has been alleged by the defense, the issue for this jury is whether or not Sarah Boone had the right to defend herself with force, deadly force or non-deadly force, based on her beliefs and impressions at the time, whether they were reasonable under the jury instructions, under the special jury instructions that are going to be applied to battered spouse syndrome, under the jury instructions, under justifiable use of deadly force, whether her perceptions about threat is imminent and whether it was appropriate or reasonable to act the way she did. This expert is trying to say that she was not facing imminent risk of harm at the time. Thank you both for your arguments. The court is going to overrule your objection, find that it is not an ultimate issue of fact as addressed by 90.703. The court specifically relies on Dinkins versus State 976. 7nd, 660, at pinpoint 661. In that case, a psychologist testifies in a, 
In that, in the instant case, in Jenkins, the psychologist's opinions were not legal conclusions. The psychologist did not opine on the defendant's guilt or innocence. Rather, the psychologist opined only as to whether the victim was, quote, mentally defective, end quote, and capable of consent to intercourse. Although the opinions did go to ultimate issues in the case, Florida case law, or Florida law, excuse me, expressly, expressly provides that an expert witness may render such opinion, see section 90.703 Florida statutes, which provides that testimony in the form of an opinion or inference otherwise admissible is not objectionable because it includes an ultimate issue to be decided by the trier of fact. Thus, the jury had the power to accept or reject the opinions and was not bound by such. For those reasons, your objection is overruled. It's not important what I was asked to repeat the question and the answer. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Let's, he's going to have Madam Court Reporter read back the question and the answer, and then he is going to have no other questions for this witness. I object. Basis. He was asked to answer. Overruled. There was a pending objection. I'm allowed the state to re ask it so it's clear based on that objection. Judge, it's 11 30. I'm going to be at least an hour before mine. We're going to begin your cross examination after we're done with the after the, defense, uh, the state advises the jury in open court. Uh, there are no more questions. Let's go ahead and bring back in our panel. <laughs> State to recognize our jury. Yes, you have to recognize our jury. You may be seated. Thank you. That was the jury again. If you could raise those hands. Juror number two, back right. He gets it. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Record reflect all hands have been raised. State, you may proceed. <clears throat> Question and answer. Out of court order. Question time, Mr. J. All right. Irrespective of whether anybody has any opinion about whether this film is suffering from PTSD or PSF, irrespective of that, based on their evaluation of this film, what you relay to you about the fact of this case does PSD and PSS have any relation? Mr. Owens' objection asked and answered. The court overruled the witness, no. Question, in what particular part of her statements about the incident is that? Answer, the whole part where she's describing the part of about playing hide and seek, they were having a good time, and they were laughing. When you got in two days, and she found him, they were enjoying themselves, she zipped him, they were still laughing, having had a good time, all of that isn't consistent with her having a feeling of she had imminent risk or imminent risk of harm. No further questions. Any cross examination? Yeah. You may proceed, sir. <laughs> Dr. Warren, good morning. Mm -hmm. What all did you consider collaterally as it relates to your opinions you're expressing here today? Um, I had a number of documents that I reviewed on the list. Um, I had um, Orange County Sheriff's 
Sheriff's Office investigation report. I had a transcript of a two-hour interview of um, the defendant. I had a that's the that's the two-hour interrogation with Detective Lowen and Detective Cost. It's a interview, yes. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. He's labeled an interview. Um, then I had a transcript of a second interview uh, the next day of Miss Boom. I had um, medical records from Aspire Health. And Advent Health, and and I had some cell phone records, and I also uh, received um, the deposition of your ex. The deposition of Dr. Julie Harper. Yes. Okay. And did you did you <coughs> listen to Dr. Julie Harper's uh, depos or testimony in this trial of Sarah Bean? No. Do you agree you have a right to do that? Uh, yes. And did you listen to Sarah Boone's testimony in the trial of this case? No. you agree you have a right to do that? Yes. You elected not to listen to her testimony before expressing opinions here today? Overall. Um, I did not have time to do that. Did not have time to do that? Correct. She's on trial for murder. Right? Yes. Sustained. You said you considered some text messages from Sarah Boone's phone? I reviewed them, correct. Would it be fair to say that of those text messages, they're not necessarily overly relevant? Yes. Regarding these text messages that you provided, did that inform your opinion that you just expressed about the inapplicability of PSS or PTSD to the facts of this case? No. Okay. Did it apply to your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? No. Are those, that information, when you, when you express opinions in court about a patient or about an individual, you rely on your personal assessment as well as the documents and evidence that you're provided and asked to review. Are you not? Correct. And in this case, your testimony is that you reviewed all that information before you interviewed Sarah Boone for two and a half hours on October the 2nd of 2024, 20, 22 days ago. Correct. So you had the information, yes. the documents, you read the documents. Yes. You read all the text messages. Correct. And you're, you're going to express some opinions here today. Are you not? Correct. You're going to express some opinions about narcissism, whether or not she had to do Yes.
Objections overruled. You may proceed. Ma'am, is it fair to say in your evaluation of Sarah Boone on October the 2nd of 2024 that you felt like the text messages that you received from the state attorney are not relevant to your evaluation of Sarah Boone? Um, I wasn't sure at the time um, who actually um, I wasn't sure whose phone number it was, and I wanted to discuss that in the deposition. And I wasn't sure. I have no proof of who actually sent the text, who actually had possession of the phone and put the text, any of the text. Well, I was there for the deposition, was I not? Or I appeared by Zoom, did I not? No, so you were present in person. Okay, I'm trying to think. Oh, deposition. You the deposition. By Zoom, yes. You appear by Zoom, I appear by Zoom. The <laughs> And we discussed that these were the phone records from Sarah Boone's phone. Okay. And at that time, you said they're not necessarily overly relevant to your evaluation. Did you not say that? Um, I don't recall specifically. I'm happy to, to look at it. Did I approach the witness? You know, I have it. Can you just refer me to the page? Just a moment. You got I do. Page 14. My question is at line three. Your answer begins at line five. Correct. And you agree that any... I'm finished. I'm finished. Well, I'm going on. I'm, I'm going to ask another question about the text messages. Judge. You just said line five. Approach. So, Dr. Warren, did that refresh your recollection about uh, our discussions about the text messages in your evaluation? Yes. And would you agree that they're not necessarily overly relevant to your evaluation of Sarah Boone? Correct. And you agree that after reviewing all those text messages, that there was nothing that stuck out to you that caused you to pause and feel like they may have some impact on your evaluations of Sarah Boone? Can she answer the question? How about you answer the question first? I'm not sure what you're referring to in the deposition. Page 14. My question is at line 21. Your answer is at line 25. Correct. And I said no. As I said, it made me aware that they had a volatile relationship. But my question to you specifically is, is there anything in the text messages that stuck out to you that caused you to pause and feel like that that may have some impact on your evaluations? Correct. And you agree your answer is no. As I said, it made me aware. That's not my complete answer. Okay, well, let's talk about my first. You said no. As I said, it made me aware that they had a volatile. It's not my complete answer. I know, Dr. Morgan, but didn't you say no to me? That was your first sentence, was no. It's not my complete answer. I understand. I'm going to let you answer that. But when I asked you if there was anything in the text messages that caused you to pause and would in some way affect the impact on your evaluation, your answer to me was no. It's not my complete I understand. But was your answer not to me no? Yes, but that is not my now. At the same time, Dr. Warner, Dr. Warner, at the same time, you expressed that they had a volatile relationship. That is not the totality of my answer. Either. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to get to it. But part of your answer was that they had a volatile relationship. Correct. And this is a relation to my question about the text messages. You agree? Yes. After you said no, you said they had a volatile relationship. And that she text message calling him an idiot, a fucking idiot, for overdrafting her account. Correct. Right. And in those text messages, there was some reference to domestic violence between the two. Correct. Right. 
And that demonstrated to you that they had a violent relationship. Correct. And do you not agree that that evidence of a violent, volatile relationship had an effect on you expressing your opinion here today that Sarah Boone suffered from battered spouse syndrome? Judge, we look at it. We need to approach it.
All right, members of the jury, uh, it is 11.55. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and take our lunch break. Um, I'm going to give you a similar instruction that I've given you throughout the last couple of days. So give me a moment to pull it back up. <laughs> Jurors, you must not conduct any investigation on your own. This includes reading newspapers, watching television, or using a computer, a cell phone, the internet, any electronic device, or any other means at all to get information related to this case or the people and places involved in this case. This applies whether you are in the courthouse, at home, or anywhere else. You must not visit places mentioned in the trial or use the internet to look at maps or pictures to see any place discussed during the trial. Jurors do not watch local news or read local newspapers. Jurors must not have discussions of any sort with friends, family members, or even your fellow jurors about the case or the people and places involved. So do not let anyone make comments to you or ask questions about the trial. I want to stress again, bless you, that just as you must not talk about this case face-to-face, -face, you must not talk about this case by using an electronic device. You must not use phones, computers, or other electronic devices to communicate. Do not send or accept any messages related to this case or your jury service. Do not discuss this case or ask for advice by any means at all, including posting information on an internet website, chat room, or blog. With that, members of the jury, we're going to be in recess till 1.30, and we'll pick up at that point in time. Thank you so much for your service. Y'all may be seated. State, anything else? No, Your Honor, thank you. Defense? All right, we'll see you at one thirty. Thank you very much. Courts in recess. We are back on the record. Uh, case number 2020 CF2603, State of Florida versus Sarah Boone. Let me get appearances from the state. Steve Castro, I'm half the state. Blue Jay, the state. Defense. Ms. Boone is seated at council's table wearing the same clothing from this morning. Are we prepared to bring back in our jury at this time, state? Yes, sir. Defense. Yes, sir. 
make another motion. Judge, I had a chance to read this transcript, and I'd like to draw your attention to a few pages. Which transcript are we referring to, sir? Uh, the October 4th, 2024 deposition of Dr. Tanya Border. Okay. Yes, sir. I have it in front of me. Can I sit? Yes, sir. I'm referring to page 38 at the very bottom, line 21. Okay. And, sir, I need to go through my notes and think about it and process it. But I had other depositions that you all were yesterday, so I had to prepare for those and go through that. So I had not had time to process through all of my notes prior to this that was issued today. Page 39. Line two, well, doctor, I'm not trying to inconvenience you. You know, the judge set for October 7th for jury selection. Line five, she answered, okay. Question at six, but I don't anticipate your testimony will be until later, you know. Maybe we could just continue your deposition and then you set it when you've got time to review. Because obviously I'm not going to want to take your deposition and then you have other opinions that are not going to be covered. And at 13, Mr. J says, what is your position? And at 14, Mr. J conducted discovery after the jury trial starts. is completely unacceptable to me, so that's my position. She needs to issue a supplemental report or if there comes a need for a second deposition, and we can address that. But it would be my position that we need to get this done because the state doesn't have any appellate rights on the jury. The jury is sworn in jeopardy of fashion. Line 23, Mr. Owens, well, you obviously understand my position. I'd like to finish the deposition today as well. But if she is holding out, she is holding out that she may have other opinions and other diagnoses after she has had more time to think, review the paperwork. And obviously that, that creates an issue. A witness on line 4, page 40. But if that happens, I can bring that forward, and then you can add to your deposition at that point. If my opinions change after having reviewed her. Line 8, Mr. Owens. Mr. J? Line 9, Mr. J. I think you need to plow ahead. This is our time where the court reporters prepared to give us a transcript by the end of the weekend, and if something needs to be amended, then she can A, issue a report, and then B, if you need to take a deposition, an abbreviated deposition on the limited subject matter she is not here to testify about to one day, then we can do that. But the notion of halting a deposition today that is set for three hours and then doing a three hour deposition during the trial, especially after jeopardy is attached, is not what the state will do. Line 23, page 4. Mr. Owens, I'm not suggesting that, Mr. J. I'm suggesting that we just said at the very beginning. I'm suggesting what you just said at the very beginning, which is let's finish. But if she has some supplement, then I would want to take a brief second deposition as it relates to any new diagnosis or opinion. Then Mr. J goes, I think he gets confused about an issue relating to a diagnosis of adjustment disorder or anxiety disorder. So we get down to the bottom of page 41, line 22, Mr. J. Okay, so on this topic, if something new comes up, then we can address it. But if we have other topics to depose her on, then I would suggest to go on. And in page 42, line 1, Mr. Owens, I agree. I agree. And Dr. Warner, just let the state attorney know. I know that you may be, you know, we are short, we are on short time. If if you do review your notes over the weekend or whatnot and formulate any other opinions, just let the state attorney know and we'll address it. Line seven, the witness. Absolutely. <clears throat> that was our understanding. I've been ambushed by a new opinion. That I was not made aware of by any kind of report. I was not notified by Dr. Warner. I was not notified by the state attorney, Leah J. I approached her about the opinion which she testified to it, and I objected to it, relating to imminent threat, the ultimate issue of fact. I moved for a total dismissal for prosecutorial misconduct. Denied. And here's the other reason it's denied. 
page 38 of the deposition, specifically, you made reference to starts at page 21. The question preceding that is important. Question 14. So, the, from my understanding, when you just said was, yeah, I agree with general anxiety disorder that she had been diagnosed with. Answer. No. I said it would be generalized anxiety disorder versus adjustment disorder, and that I hadn't had time to fully formulate that opinion out. This entire conversation pertains to those two issues, anxiety disorder and adjustment disorder. It has nothing to do with P- PTSD, nothing to do with battered spouse. The judge, we go on, and I see what she's doing, that she's saying, Hey, I got jammed up. I had a deposition yesterday. I didn't really have time. Between the evaluation and deposition two days later, she had a deposition in between to really think about it, to really review my notes. So as a catch-all, I said on page 40, if you have other opi- opinions or other diagnoses after she has more time to think and review the paperwork, then obviously that creates an issue. So... Yes, that was initially what she was talking about specifically, but I realized what she was saying was she was going to have to reflect on a lot of these opinions. So I that's respectfully, sir, that's not what it says. That's specifically in line with the anxiety disorder versus adjustment disorder. That was the entire topic that was being conversed with. Now, later in the deposition, there are references, as I believe that I identified previously. Give me a moment. On page 59, line 22, the question is asked, okay, and do you intend on expressing any other opinions other than what we've spoken about here today? Line 25, no. I will answer whatever questions I'm, moving to page 60, line 1, asked. Page 60, line 11. Well, let me just start with two because it gives it more context. Question, well, I'm asking now. I mean, you're the expert. I'm not. You're the one that's evaluated her. You're the one that's given her the test. I don't know the field like you do. You know the field. I understand you've said, hey, I want to think some more about, excuse me, hey, I want to think about this some more. I want to review my notes. Some more to see if, but in terms of right now, without any further reflection, without any further answer, yes, sir, question, reading of the notes, any other opinions that you think you could express in any form or fashion with all this experience, almost a thousand jury trial or a thousand trials you've testified as an expert. Anything else that comes to mind that may be an opinion that you might express in Sarah Boone's case? Answer. Anything else that I'm asked with regard to her diagnosis come into play with regard to her case, I guess? Question. What other opinions do you believe you're qualified to express as it relates to Sarah Boone and the facts and circumstances relating to this case? Anything with regard to her diagnosis, I guess. 61. Of those four things we mentioned, line two. Correct. And just the four things were mentioned were related to the anxiety disorder, Narcissism, the battered spouse, and alcohol use disorder. The overall thrust of that was any other opinions that were expressed. That was in good faith what they were doing. I would have, like I said before, I would have never taken her deposition. Once she said I hadn't finished my analysis and I may need additional information, just like she he said the other day, Dr. Harper, if you get those additional medical records, Mr. Owens, uh, about George Torres and give it to Dr. Harper, then I'm going to want to take the deposition again. The same rule is why? why would I take the deposition when she, she hasn't finished? Uh, because the court ordered you to take her deposition because there were concerns about being able to have all of this done prior to trial. And you had concerns about what she was going to testify to. And the court, court set a scheduling order as to when, how, where, and the deadlines for those depositions to be conducted. That prosecutor should let me know. If he was going to ambush me at trial, I should have known beforehand about a new opinion that Dr. Warner was going to express, especially related to battered spouse, post-traumatic stress, 
And whether or not he's an imminent threat at the time of this appeal. And the courts address that. The court does, did exactly what was required by binding precedent by the Sixth District Court of Appeal and held a Richardson hearing, analyzed the three factors as required by Florida law with regard to those, and gave you the opportunity as a cure. And with regard to your request to strike or dismiss the case due to prosecutorial conduct, the case law by the Third District Court of Appeal, filed April 10, 2024, State of Florida versus Denninghoff, D-E-N-N-I-N-G-H-O-F-F, and I can provide you a citation momentarily, states that dismissal is an extreme sanction to be used with caution and only when a lesser sanction wouldn't achieve the desired result. Specifically, dismissal of an information or indictment is an action of such magnitude that resort to such sanctions should only be had when no viable alternative exists. There were multiple viable alternatives, including but not limited to my request, uh, an inquiry of whether or not you wanted that struck and the instruction to strike that opinion, which you demurred and said, no, I want it for cross-examination. And I gave you the opportunity twice to depose her here in open court, which I oversaw with regard to any opinion that she had based on the proffer or any other opinion that she would be offering today. For those reasons, the court is not going to exercise its discretion and strike due to the extreme nature of striking a, a criminal charge and for the adequate remedy that has been provided to you. Is there anything else, sir, we need to address? Yes, supplement records. Yes, sir. Judge, this deposition did not end on page 40 or 41 or 42. Mr. Owens took the direct examination of this deponent for 68 pages, and then it was turned over to myself for cross-examination during the deposition. Beginning on page 75, I asked the deponent, what did the defendant say about the murder? What she said on page 78 was that starting at line 13 and she said there was a suitcase and some clothes that had gotten out to donate and they were trying to get that together it was on the floor in the living room and that as she was coming down the stairs she saw him kind of slipping into the suitcase as a hiding place as she said i was i saw him in the suitcase and i zipped him up and we were laughing she said then he said he couldn't breathe and i remember feeling i couldn't breathe when he was choking me or sobbing and I was angry and I shook the suitcase. I lost control of the suitcase and it flipped. And she goes on and on about what happened. Defense counsel was there. He heard this testimony that there was no imminent danger presented at the time that she uh, began getting angry, shaking the suitcase, hitting him with the bat, so on and so forth. And he didn't ask her that question after she had specifically instructed him, if you need an opinion of mine, you've got to ask him the question. It's unfair to experts to uh, be thrown with this catch-all provision of, please tell me and any opinion about this case that you may think is relevant. Well, what the doctor may think is relevant is different than perhaps what counsel thinks is relevant. Um, so it's, it's really uh, an unfair criticism of the state uh, and probably more likely uh, self-reflective that this deposition, this opportunity to ask about this obvious issue did not occur. So that is what I would like to supplement the record with. The deposition was substantially longer than page 41 or 42, where it's acting like it's concluding, and uh, is there anything else? The state would just submit I understand very well what my ethical duties are. I do not have any ethical duty to provide him an unreported statement that is not inconsistent with prior testimony. This doctor did not give me any unreported statements inconsistent with her testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Judge, I'd like to add on page 79 that she, Dr. Warner claims that Sarah said, he put his two fingers out and I hit them with a bat. It was but for him to say that that's not standard operating procedure is to take the definition of an expert. Mr. Owens, I've ruled, sir. I understand. I understand your position. 
However, the questions that were specifically asked, which gave rise to this, specifically pertain to opinions of PTSD. I'm not going to rehash any and all of those things. The record speaks for itself. The court has ruled. Your motion for dismissal of the charges is denied. For the record, the citation that the court relied upon with regard to Denninghoff is located at 388 Southern 3rd 10055, located at pinpoint 1057 Florida 4th. Third District Court of Appeal, April 10th, 2024. With that, we're ready to bring back in our team. Yes, sir. Okay. Judge, I've got Earhart's Florida Evidence 23 edition, Volume 1, Charleston. I'm already, I, I, let me tell you how you're going to rule on this, sir. I'm going to allow you, as I said up here inside, to go into the facts that she relied upon and what it is that she utilized. I'm going to allow you, sir, as I said up here at the bench before the lunch hour, to go into those opinions that she didn't offer here today. And on rebuttal, Mr. J, I'm not going to allow you to stand up and say, may I have one That wasn't one of your opinions today. You can address all of that and redirect. Is that clear? Great. Let me just review to see if, because I had several. What you had inquired of me, Mr. Owens, up here, was that you wanted to go into these other facts, medical records, text messages, statements. And you said, if I can't do it now because he's going to object, I'm going to call her and assert. Uh, rebuttal. And the problem, as the state pointed out, is that you can't use her as a conduit to admissible evidence on direct examination. And that if you want to do it, you got to do it now. And your argument was it goes to her bias, it goes to her credibility, and that you're permitted wide discretion on cross-examination. I agree with you. I agreed with you before the lunch hour. My ruling hasn't changed. <laughs> Going to absolutely allow you to go into those things. I appreciate that, Judge. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to readdress was <laughs> there's, I'm taking care of it, Counsel. Give me a moment. Yes, sir. Judge, I'm referring to uh, Air Force Treatise Section 9.703, opinion on the ultimate issue. I'm on page 933. Testimony in the form of an opinion or inference, otherwise, the principles are objectable because it includes an ultimate issue to be decided by the prior fact. And in that section, 703.1, it talks about that <clears throat> opinion testimony. Is not inadmissible solely because it includes an ultimate issue to be decided by the prior fact. The provision is equally applicable to expert and lay witnesses. The jury has the power to accept and reject the testimony of expert or lay witnesses, witnesses and is not bound by their conclusions. Merely because the witness expresses an opinion to an ultimate issue does not compel the jury to find the facts to be true. The jury may give the opinion. The jury will give the opinion as much weight as it feels the opinion deserves. Then it goes on. The, the abolition of the rule against opinions on the ultimate issues does not mean that all other opinions are admissible. Witnesses who were prevented from expressing their conclusions when the opinion only tells the jury how to decide the case. Witnesses will be prevented from expressing their conclusions when the opinion only tells the jury how to decide the case and does not help the jury to determine what occurred. For example, a witness cannot express his or her opinion as to the guilt or innocence of a criminal defendant. And I'm on page 940. 703.1 still. When a witness is asked to express an opinion that applies a legal standard to a set of facts, which Dr. Warner did, the opinion testimony is generally inadmissible. The danger is that the witness will apply a standard or definition which is different from that defined by the applicable law. The application of erroneous legal standard results in the opinion testimony being misleading and not helpful to the jury. For example, 
An expert cannot opine whether a nursing home was negligent in its care of the decedent. It's exactly what we spoke about at the council's team. No, Judge, but if you go on, it says an expert may not be permitted that a truck driver drove his gross, drove in a grossly negligent manner, whether the sheriff's conduct was unconstitutional, whether certain waters are navigable, whether the defendant's action constitutes a misapplication or concealment of funds, or the legal obligations of the parties to the country. Whether the testimony of the expert is a permissible, permissible factual conclusion or the impermissible application of a legal standard or definition to a set of facts is sometimes a fine distinction involving a large measure of discretion with a trial judge. For example, the admission of expert testimony to certain investments it goes on. However, the witness expresses an opinion about the intent of the accused. The opinion, this, this is the, one of the important sections. However, if the witness expresses an opinion about the intent of the accused, which Dr. Warner did, the opinion has not been permitted. The distinction drawn by the courts as to when this type of opinion testimony is admissible are often not clear. Section 90.703 does not permit a witness to testify to legal conclusions or express an opinion upon questions of substantive law. This expert testimony regarding substantive legal principles may not be helpful to the jury and may create confusion if an expert testifies in a manner that is different or even in conflict with the testimony of an opposing expert. But the citations, respectfully, counselor, and yeah. respectfully, counselor, the citations that you're referring to are not at issue. Fluellen. Error to permit a resting officer to testify that the quantity of cocaine possessed by appellant indicated that he possessed with intent to sell, which is a specific element of the charge in that case. Gamble. Officer's expert testimony with the amount of drugs found in the defendant's possession was inconsistent with personal use and therefore intended for sale was inadmissible. 6447 second 1376 by Ford Gamble and Fluellen 703 Southern second 511. The, the Dinkin case that I read says this is acceptable. If a psychologist or psychiatrist can text testify that someone is not mentally defective or was mentally defective, that's on all fours with based on what the defendant had said to this expert. She was not in imminent fear. Now, I don't remember exactly what was said, but it was along those lines. Based on looking all those things, the totality of the circumstances of what, in my evaluation, on or about October 2, that the defendant had said to me as the expert, it's not imminent fear. That object, that opinion is not inadmissible per the case law under Dinkins. Can I read a little bit more? It, it if you're just going to be reading from the treatise, I've already read it. Okay, I just want to, I just want to make mention, because it's talking about does not prevent a witness to testify about legal conclusions or express opinions on questions of substantive law. I was about, about to finish this text, this, this section. When the testimony, the testimony, this testimony, and I'm on page 947, this testimony may also interfere with the function of the trial judge to determine the applicable law and to instruct the jury thereon. As we know, we're going to do battle over the jury instruction on justifiable use of deadly and non deadly force. The testimony from Dr. Warner, and I wrote it down, she said, based on what Doc, uh, Sarah Bill told her, she was not facing imminent risk of harm. That invades the province and function of the trial judge to determine the applicable law and to instruct the jury otherwise, which we haven't even done yet. You haven't made findings of law about which instructions apply. That's what she did, Judge. Your objection's been made for the record. The court previously ruled on this matter. I appreciate the additional argument. But the court's reliance on Dinkins remains. Just because 9703 speaks for itself. So your objection is overruled as to that issue. Anything else we need to address, Mr. Ellen, before we bring back in? Our panel? No. State? Nothing. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Let's bring back in our panel. <laughs>
Judge, you can just stay where you are, Counselor. Just wait for them to come in. State, you recognize our jury? Yes, sir. In fact, you recognize our jury? Thank you all for be seated. Members of the jury, welcome back. Juror number two, back row. He's already ready. I see those hands are raised. You know what's coming. Y'all comply with court's instructions, right? Thank you. Record reflect all hands have been raised. Mr. Owens, you may continue your cross examination, sir. Dr. Warner, I don't want to <clears throat> rehash it, but just for the jury's sake. It would be fair to say that the text messages that you were forwarded by the state attorney you, by the state attorney for you to review, you did not deem to be relevant to your evaluation. Right. Hey, uh, hey um, demonstrate. Demonstrate, yeah, yes or no question. <coughs> Now, from what I understand, uh, when the state attorney sent you the information, they, they did not send you any videotapes. Correct. So you have not reviewed any videotapes in this matter. Correct. The, the suitcase videotapes, either one of those, you have not reviewed. I have not seen them. Or any body cam videotapes you have not reviewed. They're described in the uh, police report. My question is, have you viewed any of the body cam videotapes relating to this incident? I have not seen them. Correct. Prior incidences between the two of them, have you reviewed any videotapes, body cam videotapes of any prior incidents? I have not. Have you reviewed the audio tapes related to some of the questions, Sarah? Ben? I have you reviewed the autopsy report? Uh, it's described in the incident report, but I did not see the actual autopsy. Now, you're aware that uh, we have called two, um, two experts, Dr. Michael Brannon and Dr. Julie Hawk. Is that correct? Yes. And you're aware that they are forensic psychologists. That's correct. And you are a forensic psychiatrist. So they didn't go to medical school, and you did. That's correct. And they don't understand medical issues, so to speak. I I don't have an understanding of what they understand medical. Do you recall telling me that they don't understand medical issues, so to speak? They haven't been to medical school, but I wouldn't understand their medical knowledge. If you would look on page twenty-two of your deposition. <coughs> Approach. Objections over. Dr. Warner, have you had a chance to review your deposition on page 22, starting at line 7? Yes. Could you read down through line 11 your answer? Yes, I'm talking about psychologists in general, not with regard specifically to your experts, which is what you were just asking. 
Okay, but you would agree. Your opinion is psychologists typically do therapy, but they don't prescribe medication or understand medical issues, so to speak. Over there. But I wasn't specifically talking about your experts, which you were just asking me about your experts. Okay. And I said, I didn't understand. I didn't know what their specific medical issues right. That's what you said under oath October 4th of this year. Are you going to be sustained? Now, is it fair to say that the majority of your work is in the field of competency to proceed and guardianship evaluations? Actually, the majority of my work is in patient care. I work seven days a week um, on crisis stabilization and actually treating patients. You work seven days a week. Yes, sir. So, as a forensic psychiatrist doing forensic work, the majority of your work in that area is in the field of competency to proceed and guardianship evaluations. The forensic psychiatrist, as a psychiatrist, I work seven days a week um, on the crisis stabilization unit. And where is that unit? It's in, uh, located in Lake City, Florida. So you work there seven days a week. Yes, sir. And then on, you also do this forensic psychiatrist work doing competencies to proceed and guardianship evaluation. That's part of uh, the, uh, what comes under the umbrella of my forensic work. Yes. That's the majority of your forensic work. Yes, that's the majority. Uh, that's the most common cases that, that we're asked to. to and then next in line would be sanity at the time of the crime. Yes. So you would make a determination and submit a report to the court as to whether or not a defendant, an accused, is legally sane or not at the time of the offense. Yes, that's correct. Is it fair to say that you also testify weekly as a treating physician through Baker Act Court? Yes, that's correct. Um, every Thursday, um, we have Baker Act hearings um, with regards to our individuals who are being held in our crisis stabilization unit. Um, Is that in Gainesville or Lake City? Now, Lake City from here is north. Uh, north of Gainesville? Yes, sir. It's approximately four minutes north of Gainesville. Now, I believe you said you've testified in battery spouse situations in court approximately five to ten times? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And you often refer to that as intimate violence cases? Yes. Now, my understanding that after you had a chance to evaluate my client, Sarah Boone, I believe you evaluated her two days before the deposition, so it would have been uh, October the 2nd of 2024. As to your diagnosis as it relates to her, do you believe that she suffers from a generalized anxiety disorder? No, sir. Now, you're aware that she was previously diagnosed prior to, prior to you evaluating her. She was previously diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder. She uh, told me that she had previously been diagnosed. I did not see any medical records um, with that diagnosis. And it, she uh, told me that she had previously been diagnosed. Did you attempt to secure any other records to us? Did you diagnose her with an adjustment disorder? I did diagnose her with an adjustment disorder. 
do you believe that if she was diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder, it's really not that, it should be an adjustment disorder? Um, a lot of the symptoms overlap for the two diagnoses, um, and we see that quite often that the different diagnosticians or core um, physicians um, come up with different diagnoses um, based on a, a lot of those symptoms. So it's not uncommon for, for the two diagnoses to, to overlap based on the symptoms. Do you agree back on October the 4th, 2024, when I took your deposition, that you could not make up your mind at that time whether she suffered from generalized anxiety disorder or an adjustment disorder? I had not made a, a clinical decision at that time. I hadn't reviewed um, all of my documents at that time. When did you make a clinical decision that she suffered from adjustment disorder as opposed to generalized anxiety disorder? Um, it was probably within the, the next week when I was reviewing all of the, going through all of the um, documents in her, um, her interview more thoroughly. Dr. Warner, did you, you agree you did not notify me? Judge, thank you, Judge. Yes. Objection is sustained. Dr. Warner, you, you agree that when, when I took your deposition on October the 4th, uh, you had questions, in all honesty, about whether or not you felt like she, Sarah Boone suffered from a generalized anxiety disorder versus an adjustment disorder. Um, I was leaning towards adjustment disorder secondary to no being in the correctional uh, setting, and I think I can see that in my deposition. Um, I didn't know that I had enough um, information um, from her because I only had information from her. I didn't have anything in the medical records to support uh, generalized anxiety. So I wanted to review that. I'm just learning it now. That you testified over uh, Sustained. You, is this the first time you've let parties know that this is your opinion? That, that I believe that she has generalized anxiety disorder? No. Adjustment disorder. Now, from your evaluation, you determined that she had a personality trait. That's correct. And you, you felt like that she had a grandiosity issue? Yes, she has a narcissistic personality. A trait, one trait. Correct. Do you agree a lot of people have one trait? A lot of people have a grandiosity trait that, that are not narcissists. I never said that she was a narcissist. 
Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone has alcohol use disorder? And are you forming that opinion based on Sarah Boone's admission to you that she was an alcoholic? She has a history of being diagnosed with that. She also acknowledged to me that her use had been wrong. So you formed the opinion that she suffered from alcohol use disorder based on the history that she presented to you at this uh, evaluation? It was based on the totality of the information that I was provided, so the medical records demonstrating that she had been diagnosed with it in the past. Her um, ex-husband um, in the in his interview in uh, this report, described her as an alcoholic um, in her description of herself having a problem with alcohol. Do you acquire a tolerance over time if you drink on the regular? That's one of the criteria. Do, do people also have a genetic tolerance for alcohol? You know, as it relates to uh, battered spouse syndrome, um, would you agree that uh, that is a recognized syndrome in the psychiatric community? And you have heard no criticisms of that syndrome. And you would agree that's a subset of post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes. And you would agree that Lenora Walker first developed the theory of post-traumatic stress syndrome? Yeah. Now, I think at the time of this deposition, you were not sure you knew Lenora Walker. All right, look at page 54. Sure.
Objection is sustained. But the woman, you recognize the Lord E. A. Walker's book, Battered Woman Syndrome, as an authoritative treatise, treatise on battered spouse syndrome? Um, I do not, because I have not read every I haven't read it, so I can't say that I agree with that. Is it clear to you that Sarah Boone was involved in a violent relationship with George Torres? Yes. Do you agree that there was a violent cycle that occurred during that three and a half year relationship that Sarah Boone had with George Torres? Would you describe that one? Would you describe it that way? Um, it's been described that way too, but yes. Do you have an opinion? Sustained. So you have an opinion that that was a violent cycle between Sarah Boone and George Torres? Do you agree that George Torres was the abuser and Sarah Boone was the victim in that? Um, it's been, it was a volatile relationship in the police report. Her ex husband actually describes her as being the aggressor. Okay, I'm going to show you. It's going to identify. It's going to identify. Have you ever seen this photograph? I have not. Do you see the injuries on Sarah Ben? I do. I'll show you. That's identification H. You see this photograph? Have you ever seen it before? I have not. Do you agree that Sarah Ben? Have you? Were you aware that George Torres? Sustained. Let me show you. That's identification G. Have you ever seen this photograph? I have not. Did you ever read anything about George Torres using a curtain rod <clears throat> as a weapon against Sarah Boone? I don't recall that specifically. F, have you ever seen this photograph? No. Defense identification. Me? Have you ever seen this photograph? No. Identification D. Have you ever seen this photograph? No. Have you ever seen a videotape relating to this photograph? No. Identification A. Have you ever seen this one? No. Now, I believe at the time of the deposition that you had spent two of it, I think, on October the 2nd of 2024, you had spent two and a half hours evaluating Sarah Boone, and about half of that time was giving her a test. Cerebral status examination takes approximately five minutes. Okay. Uh, did you go through her entire history of abuse over the three and a half year period within the two hours and 20 minutes that you had? Yeah. Now, 
I understand that you, you indicated you may take a couple more hours to go through your file and your notes and come up with your conclusions. Did you do that? Yes. Have you spent any more time on the case other than that two hours? Um, I reviewed um, the documents. Have you made any other attempts to go see Sarah Boone anymore? <laughs> Sustained. You agree that your opinions are subjective, not based on authority. Um, they're based on my uh, education, training, and years of experience. And you would agree they're, they're your subjective opinions? Correct. Would you agree that Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? I would you agree that battered women's experiences affect their perception of imminent danger? They can. Would you agree that victims of repeat violence may fear death in a situation others would not? They may. Because someone suffers from battered spouse syndrome, they have a heightened sensitivity to danger. They may. You agree that people suffering from depression and anxiety are predisposed to getting into a relationship with a partner who may be violent. They may each individual is different. Are they more susceptible to getting in a relationship if they suffer from depression and anxiety with a violent intimate partner? They may be. Do you agree that the DSM, I think you have it there with you, yes. directs that the clinician should consider post-traumatic stress disorder if there was exposure to extreme stress? Do you agree with that? Yes. Did you do any testing to measure whether or not Sarah Boone had post-traumatic stress disorder? No. Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. I think I, she did not give me enough information to formulate an opinion in regards to that. You agree that an intimate partner, partner who commits acts of violence, physical violence, against uh, the victim, that that could cause extreme stress in that individual. Okay. Do you agree if that that is? Cause the violence is the cause of extreme stress that a diagnosis of post traumatic stress disorder should be considered. Well, maybe the criteria have to be the diagnosis. You agree that there is a, a sense of learned helplessness when someone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? Yes, that's part of this. Do you agree that these women, these battered women, have learned? The probability of receiving a beating, and they recognize specific predictive cues emitting from the batterers. Yes, but it's not. I understand, but you would agree the vast majority of intimate partner violence, battered spouse syndrome victims are women. Yeah, intimate partner violence. Excuse me. Intimate partner violence. The vast majority. 
the lion's share are women. And these battered women have learned the probability of receiving a beating by recognizing specific predictive cues committed by the battered. And many times, these predictive cues result in a high level of anxiety. And in that situation, the battered women may attempt to reduce through several different means, one of which is to avoid delaying the beating. Yes, we talked about that in the cycle. <clears throat> what is a positive instinct? A positive instinct? Primal, primal fear? Primal fear? It's just being afraid. Is that, is that a natural instinct that animals have? Fight or flight instinct? Yeah. You don't even think about it. Do you agree that victims of battered spouse or battered woman syndrome suffer from Self isolation, suicidal thoughts, and oftentimes substance abuse. Each one, each individual. And, and they may show signs of physical injury and illness, such as bruising and chronic fatigue. <laughs> the syndrome, battered woman syndrome, is the psychological effects of living with an intimate, intimate partner violence. <laughs> They may have intrusive memories, or they re-experience past traumatic events in their mind. They have high levels of anxiety, hypervigilant when, when something doesn't seem right. It leads to this fight or flight response that we spoke about. <clears throat> they have problems with sleep. They often go into denial. Minimizing what is happening to them. Numbing their emotions. Disassociation. A battered woman may often develop a defense mechanism of being able to psychologically detach from their body during the traumatic experience. Sustained. Panic attacks, severe depression, very low self-esteem, poor body image. Disassociation, learned helplessness, all these are symptoms of a battered woman syndrome. Calm down, calm down. Sustained. You agree panic attacks is one of the symptoms of battered woman syndrome. Sustained. What are the symptoms of a battered spouse syndrome? They can be um, numerous symptoms um, from anxiety, um, symptoms, symptoms. Um, they can have psychotic symptoms, any vast majority of symptoms, substance abuse symptoms, any um, vast Do you agree fear is a symptom? Yeah. Somebody in a constant state of fear. Yeah. In terms of the abusive partner, do you agree that they would hit the victim? Some of them, yes. Chick the victim? Punch to kick the victim, choke, choke, burn, destroy their belongings, use weapons to hurt them, threaten to hurt them, their children, or their pets, take their car keys, take their debit card, take their vehicle, control where they go and who they see. Force them to have sex when they don't want to. Dr. Warner, I 
know you spent a short amount of time with her, and, and you're saying you didn't get some of the answers to whether or not objection sustained. If you'd have spent more time with Sarah, then could you have uncovered that as to whether or not she suffered from battered spouse syndrome? I agree that she met the fact that she had battered spouse How about post traumatic stress disorder? It's possible. Thank you. Any redirect examination? You may proceed. In your uh, decades of experience, have you ever treated patients uh, that suffer from trauma disorders? Yes. How frequently would you say? I have patients on the new right now that I'm treating on a regular basis for that. How about patients that meet the criteria for battered spouse syndrome? How many would you say over the course of your career? Uh, probably five to six months on, on my inpatient period. And that's a lot of months. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since 1998, uh, when I began my career at the University of Now, on cross examination, you were asked uh, about some diagnosis. Correct? Yes. Any of these things that you talked about, uh, narcissistic personality disorder, adjustment disorder, anxiety, battered spouse syndrome, any stress or trauma related disorder. If the state uh, would, wanted to ask you those opinions, would you have been receptive to more materials for making any opinions about those topics? Yes. And is it your testimony today that you don't have enough um, information to necessarily make a complete and proper diagnosis on any of those things since you've not been provided those materials? Um, correct. Now, you testified that she does meet the criteria for battered spouse syndrome. Yes. Um, but you would be receptive to any evidence uh, that you were provided, right? Going back to what you testified to on direct, the state asked you your opinion about this case. Everything that you just talked about with Mr. Owens, does that change your opinion uh, about whether or not battered spouse syndrome is applicable to the facts as Ms. Boone relayed them to you about this incident? And why is that? Because um, again, she just objection, oh, judge. Objections over rule. Based on your conversation with Mr. Owens, you've indicated that your opinion did not change, and now would you answer why? Yes. So, <laughs> if I my new opinion the way that you described it um, to me, then that they were laughing and having a good time and didn't play into um, delaying any kind of triggers or, or any kind of trauma. And showing you what has been marked for identification purposes by the defendant is I. Does this photograph inform you as to what happened? No. Does it inform you as to who was the aggressor? No. H for identification, same questions. Does it inform you as to what happened? No. Does it inform you as to who the aggressor was? Same question for G. Yeah. F. Yeah. E. Yeah. D. 
did A. Yeah. If those specifics as to what happened and who was the aggressor is dependent upon the credibility of somebody, um, would you want to take into account all the things that can make a person credible or less than credible? Yes, we would. When you talk about <clears throat> alcohol um, use disorder, would you take that into account if somebody uh, is under the influence of alcohol or has been consuming alcohol and they relay a history as to what is it happening? Objections over rule. Would you consider somebody's uh, alcohol use and level of intoxication in evaluating the credibility of them as a historian? <coughs> and you were asked about whether or not you did any testing uh, for post traumatic stress disorder. Correct. And you didn't. <coughs> Um, you already indicated, however, you believe that Ms. Boone meets the criteria for battered spouse syndrome. Again, that doesn't change your opinion that you gave when talking with me on direct examination. Okay. Specifically about this question about the testing that you did not perform. Did this lack of testing um, have any ch change or effect on your opinion as to whether or not battered spouse syndrome applied to the facts of this case. No. You were, you were questioned about insanity on cross-examination. Do you recall that? Yes. Would you agree that simply because somebody is mentally ill and meets the criteria for diagnosis such as schizophrenia, bipolar, any of those psychotic or mood disorders, that doesn't necessarily make a person legally insane? Correct. But you Likewise, even if somebody meets the criteria for battered spouse syndrome, does that mean every action they take against their intimate partner is justified? Correct. So even if you do have battered spouse syndrome, even if you are in an intimately violent relationship, that doesn't necessarily mean any action you take against your partner is, is justified. That's correct. No other questions. State can this witness be released. Yes. Defense. We got to all know we reach out. All right, ma'am, you're released, potentially subject to recall. Thank you. State can call your next witness. Judge, at this time, state can move P for identification and evidence. Thank <laughs> you.
Any objection what was pre marked as P? Council. Any objection to what was pre marked as P? He's offering it in evidence. Any objection? All right. What was pre marked as P will be received into evidence without objection in States 21. <coughs> The objections. Objection. What was pre marked as B will be received in evidence without objection in States 22. Yes. Members of the jury, it is 2.52 in the afternoon. Uh, the next part of the state's presentation are going to be some videos and other things that we read to you that may take a little bit of time based on um, the length of it. So we're going to go ahead and take our afternoon break at this point in time. Similar instruction we've given to you over the last couple of days. Please not, do not conduct any independent investigation or research. There are some places things are charged involved. And do not have any discussions with anyone or amongst yourselves about those things. We'll bring in five after. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all may be seated, thank you. State, anything we need to talk about? Events. All right, we'll we'll be in recess till five after. Thank you. Y'all may be seated. Thank you. State, anything we need to talk about? Defense? All right. We'll, we'll be in recess till five after. Thank you. All right. We're back on the record. Case number 2020, CF2603, State of Florida versus Sarah Boone. State? Defense? Okay. Ms. Boone is seated at council's table wearing the same clothing from this morning. It's 3 o'clock. We're ready to bring back in our jury, Mr. J. Yes, Your Honor. Defense. All right. Let's go ahead and stand and bring back in our panel. <laughs> Thank you. 
State, you recognize our truth. Yes, Your Honor. Defense, you recognize our truth. Yes, thank you. Yes, you seated. Madam the jury began. Would you comply with court's instructions during our break? The correct reflect all hands have been raised. Thank you very much. State, you may proceed with the balance of your evidence presentation. Permission to publish what has been entered into evidence as 22, previously V as in Victor for identification. You may proceed. This exhibit uh, 22 has five folders on it. It is a DVD going into the first folder, OCSO 18-067-501. Counselor, are these audio or video files? This first one, Your Honor, is going to be a video file. Turn the lights, please. Thank you. And for record purposes, its file name ends with 0154-2. Oh, I'm trying to hold a bunch of punch and I'm like, oh man, uh, he's at least on my ass tonight and I did not, I'm not having it. Okay. Uh, I have to keep it. Hey, Lily. Oh. That you know there's no guns. No. There, no. I know, baby. Thank you, God. They're in here? Yeah, they're in What's the name? Door Dory. Say that next to the I swear to God, I'm so sad to you. I'm you people fuck every time. And I'm so sad to you. I don't know what to talk. What's up, Jordan? You want to fuck it? What's that? Fuck you in time. For the record, this is redacted. 
are the videos in States 22 redacted videos. Okay, tell me how it all went down from the beginning to my life. Okay, okay. So, we were having a really good day, and we were going to see more videos, mm-hmm. and it was really fun to the and the guy talked to another guy, and he left. Him there, and got so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad. Because I asked for a script from another guy, because it my license. My best part, mm-hmm. and everything, the rest of the community, everything. Okay. So I have to ask someone for a cigarette, mm-hmm. and it happens to die. So you walk in, and that super pissed because I asked for a cigarette from another guy. I think, well, my, my car is a full story filled. Okay. So you get home, you go inside, and let loose. Mm-hmm. Okay, you elaborate. So you open the door, what happens from there? I'm a whore. He says, call me name. Okay. When I say ragdoll, do you know what that is? I know what a ragdoll is. Oh, um, and I was ragdoll. Okay, but I need, I need to do this thing. Okay, I need you to elaborate. Like, you walk into the house. Did you start out here? You started calling your name. You said, No, I, I walked out. I walked in and I walked to the back. I couldn't see the cigarette and go to sleep. I literally went to the cigarette and I was like, And then as you're making your way to the back, oh, I got caught on the stairwell. You got caught on the stairwell. So they caught you on the stairwell. What did he get in front of you? Started confronting you, telling you anything? What happened? Um, it was bad. Okay. So I agree with Sarah. You need to tell me exactly what happened so I can help you. It's like, I don't want to get in trouble, but why would you guys be beaten up? I understand I'm trying to help you out, but I, I know you are. I need you to elaborate a little bit, so in the stairwell, drag me downstairs, and I went up. Here, try to get to bed. I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. I went. I went to bed. You caught me in the. Like in the hallway? Beat in the fuck up. That's all you say. Okay, what do you need? Like, I see your eye. You said you need to be in the eye. That's what I see. That's what I see. That's what I see. Where are you on the Floor when he kicked you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, how did you get to the floor? Did he push you? Did he pull you? How? Normally, what I do is because he does it so often, I just go to the floor. I just go to the floor. So I, or I don't really sweat what? I was proud. I have to ground. Okay. And then that's I'm what you so oh, No, no, that's fine. I don't mind. So you went down to the ground set? Right. No. Did he, did he kick you with what did you do? Recall my foot? Right. Right foot, okay. Heel. His heel. Okay. And you say you've been out of the floor. Because I asked for a cigarette. Yes, he left my ass and he was cold. Great. And you said you've been together for about a year? A year and a half. Yes. <coughs> Live together. Okay. I just recently went for the flood. He's been there with me. He was all the story. I don't know why, but. I don't know. I'm just trying to. Stop! That is the one thing. Do you want the flood from my kid? No? Okay. Okay. Do you want to touch fuzzy? You can talk to the girl if you want. Can I talk to you though? You're talking to me with my I don't want to be stupid. I see you start to speak up the police. So you don't want to touch charges? Okay. Do you want to fill out any of your work? Do a statement? No? Okay. 
Turning out a folder OCSO 19-054. Can the parks approach just for a moment? All right, sir, you may continue. Within this folder, the first thing that will be published is a file that's an audio file, 911-PAUL, underscore R1. That's the And I swear, it's good. 
I'm just going to say it because he's not on me and he's not the city of here. How long have you been Okay. 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 Now publishing a video labeled 19-054-917 underscore BAT underscore DB. Thank you. 
Tell me about that. How far away were you when you had the bag? And where was she? In the bathroom. Uh, was there anything in between you guys at the time? My dog. Just a dog? How about how close was it? Couple feet, three feet? Three feet. Okay. And how was it close to that? Right. Like, what do you mean? Was it down by his side? Was it up like this? Was it up like this? So he had an option. Yes. Yes. Okay. Did he say anything to you on the phone about it? I feel you. Okay. And what do you mean by that? He has an eye type of blood. So he's no blood. And it's not because I have a friend. I have friends. And my friends want me to get out of my community and me bullshit. So they fucking <laughs> nice stomach. Oh. Who he is not. Okay. So he has a big ball guy and he's freaky, you guys are up in the bedroom, and he's up in the area. Okay. And you were scared. Correct? So scared, so smart, I'm trying to be smart. Okay. okay. I'm going to go see if I can get him off. Alright, if not, this is your place, right? My he's not on the lead. Okay. And we have a What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? He's speaking English? Okay, what's going on? Water you right now? Because she called me. They told me, you want to tell me what's going on? Did she read? Where are you stuck on that?
Publishing portions of 19, that's 0, 054, part of 0549.17 underscore DAT underscore DV hyphen 2. For the record, it is about 47 minutes, 20 seconds long. State will publish 000 to 2 minutes and 19 minutes to 22 minutes. And all evidence will go back to the jury with a scrub computer. Moreover, his brother and his ranking mother came out here, so it should be somewhere here. I don't have it. Here's the idea to make the next giving his information on what he's doing. I don't have to do that. I don't know. I'm not in the school. I'm not. I already have been here. Okay. The majority of the I 
เดี๋ยวจะเนี่ยเดี๋ยวว่าจะแบ่งเป็นอะไรอ่าถ้าคุณได้เห็นบรรยากาศและสิ่งที่คุณเห็นที่นี่คุณจะเห็นสิ่งที่มีอยู่ที่นี่ใช่ไหมครับใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ But I see, I can see body fingers and body faces and black eyes and I don't know. It's all good. <laughs> you guys, you guys are probably not hanging out with anyone. Hello. I don't. That's I know. But there's also in the first time, so we're both you guys. We can talk about this. No. Okay. I've had a lot of you guys do that. And you shouldn't have to be at home. But you guys, if you like that. Now I guess I'm not black. เออไม่เป็นไรแต่เองมีก่อนครับจะได้เข้ามาทำไมครูสั่ง just like I told the other chef they're gonna come and come in if you I want to know that but your idea is to talk about yeah yeah I want to know I am full of they're gonna come and come in go down 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 Did you get the Did you get the pamphlet? Did you get the pamphlet? Okay, so you know that there's a place for you to go. There's a place for me to go. But you got to bring your card out. You know there's a place for you to go to. Okay, so let's go. I'm gonna go to the front of the house. Neighbors. Okay. Give me more cards. Thank you. Good one. I didn't know that. Okay. Have a good day. Okay, that's good enough. I know. Thank you. Underscore flex underscore two underscore video. It's the only one that starts with that. Mm -hmm. Come on, you give me a wrist finger. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sit down at the table and let's get your favorites going on. You didn't believe I would ever do it. I'm going to start going right back. Sure. Okay. Okay. No, you're not getting arrested. I've already told you that. Yeah. Uh, it's so cold. It's so cold. I need your ID. It's so cold. 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 It's so cold.
So with the hardware board, yeah. are you going to marry? No. How long have you been together? Was he drinking or anything today? Yeah. Oh, good. Question. Okay. Now, you just up to very nice. No, 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 And who called the police? Did you call the police? Oh, around one word? Very good. Has this happened before? Every time. Oh, no, I feel like someone's going like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make it. So, no, kind of evil heart. So, three times the place you've been? Was there ever a report written when they were here? I'm not going to say my life. I'm not going to say at 10 minutes and 0 seconds in that file. Proceeding to third folder, OCSO 19-055572. Publishing audio file 911 call, dash first. 911 was going to and he has a new contest form, and he had to to come over to my house yesterday and take the money that I got for him, which is technically mine, and also my debit card. So, and he okay, said, that it's him. If he bought it, then it's me too. So you didn't okay, know. Okay, that's fine. I need my debit card, though. Like, I have my eight year old son coming over here, and he needed my first. Okay, what's your debit card? My address is 4748. Oh, yeah. F-R-A-N-T-V. Okay, four. So what's your part number? Three. Do you have a part number? Three. Three. And that's the way you're Sure. Okay. Do you have anything else with this credit card? Yeah. Talk to your speaker. Okay. 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 Yeah, and they are of age. Okay, there's help. I think there's four seconds. Can you look straight? It's 6 2 Yes, okay. Anybody can't help right now, but you need the actual record of the day or whatever it is to be done. Is that your anything? Um, yes, 
I don't know. Okay, well, what are some you for today's report, okay? Gotcha. Okay, I'll be honest. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm testing my voice on right now. I'm actually trying to my back. Sorry, this thing. George, J O R P E. Buffet. Torres, C O R R E S. King of Legends, you know how old he is? 841. 2378. Okay. Um, right. so we'll the shirt um, right now I'm wearing a blue shirt with white right now. And there's a green pineapple on my door because it covers up the green. Okay. Yes, do you have any or your No. I mean, I have a baseball bat, but that's the only one I'm here by myself for me and my little eight year old. And you said the green pineapple, the green pineapple, covering the green. Yeah, the green pineapple covering up the tree, it says welcome. And I have a little bird, so I don't want Okay. Alright, there, we're just going to go to the next video, okay? No worries. Alright, thank you very much for the help. You're very welcome. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Publishing audio file 911 call dash second. My mom will go to the location of the emergency. I don't necessarily have an emergency. Um, it's 4748 Grand Court, 4748 Main. I'm sorry, what? 4748 in the name of the street. Grand Court. And what's going on there? Um, it's a no, there's no contract thing. Okay, he's over here, guys. Okay, he's in his branch. I thought he came crazy. Okay, is it branch court or branch court? F R A N T B. What's this on my number? Three. What's going on there? Okay. What's going on? I'm going to go with my dog. I'm going to go with my dog. I'm going to go with my dog. Come on. No, I'm going to go with my dog. I'm sorry, hold on one second. I'm so sorry to take it back. No, that's. Ma'am, what's your name? Sarah. Okay. Hey, my pantry. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Do you need a deputy? No. Excuse me? I'm sorry, what? What does that mean? Do you need a deputy? No, not necessarily. I'm trying to get my dog. I need to get one dog and get a dog. I'm trying to get them in. Come on, fine. Okay, you got the 911. <laughs> yes. Okay, and you don't need a duck head? Yeah. You need to hear it. Yes. That's mine in full value. <laughs> You're in <into> my pantry! <laughs> and this is from the theater. Hello, <laughs> ma'am? Yes. Well, the front door is here to send somebody. So, um, I'm okay. Regardless. Regardless. I know how to work. I'm okay. 
Publishing the one video in this file that starts with file and acts on. Right, I guess it's just for whatever, I don't know. Um, I have to get out of here. 
here with a no shirt, and all those um, shoes or whatever. And then you went to talk to us, right? Yes. And what did you say? What did you know what he said? He was bad. Yes.
Publishing free folder OCSO 19-078-009. First item is a PDF of photographs. Second item is a single video starting with Axon. Thank you. 
CSO 19-079759. First file is a PDF starting Second file is an audio file, 911 call, publishing. Um, it's not technically an emergency, just... 
I just want to have to think about that right now. But I think like that. I'm not going to lie. So. Okay, well, I mean, if, if you're wanting us to meet with you or go to your house, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. They're either going to arrest anyone, arrest you, arrest them. Like, that's all that the death is, like, these clues from the situation that's going on. So, it's right, right now, it's up to you what you want to do right now. If you want to do a standby, we'll come to you to the residence. I mean, yeah. it's really yeah. just what, what I know you want to do right now. I know. I just, I think I'm pretty cool. Wow. I just, oh, look what I did use. I didn't have the deputy call me about the matter. <laughs> if you want to speak to a deputy directly and if you want to do that first before having us respond out there. <laughs> okay. What's your name? So? Hold on a second, Sarah. I'm sorry, you're out. Actually, you more ways than one. And is the next phone number for you, 407 716 8284? Okay. I'm going to set up a call for a deputy to call you over the phone. So you can talk to them directly and see what they say about the situation. Um, and when they call you, it'll be from a block through the sticky number. So if you guys call like that, if you answer it, you can adjust the okay? Mm-hmm. All right. If anything changes or you decide you just want us to come up to the call back, okay? Yes. Yeah. And what was your name? My name's Rachel. Rachel, thank you so much for your help. And I've got some money on the line. Oh, you're perfect. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Publishing the one video in the folder starting with 1924, zero minutes to 20 minutes, 
No. Both are very big. She's very big. You're very big. And you want to be. What is she doing behind him? You can't discuss with him. Right? Okay. 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 Because this isn't first and then Well, I don't know that. Yes. Okay. Tell me what happened. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right now, I work at base right here. That's all. We want to go and they are about to shut down and whatnot. That is? Yes. Okay. We just saw her on the phone. Just wait. There's, there's a, you can't drink that for right now? Oh, you can't come in here for right now. Okay, you're gonna have to wait. Just give us a couple minutes. Yeah. 
我过去都看到有人在婚礼上讲的，是哪个？表明有人在做这个动作。过来吧，今天准备准备来来。Oh yeah, no, no, no. 对啊，这是这是第一次参加公司。有啊，有啊，有啊，一毛钱，得收对吧？还继续？对啊，还这么还这么好玩？哎，那个，你说一下，今天那个，嗯，你不进，是，啊，你不不看休息吗？我看第一轮，第二轮，没多少，那不在。你，他们第三轮，第三轮我，第三轮来，也是。Mr. Butcher, you want sauce? Yeah, yeah, one. Uh, my phone is upstairs. Come on. Oh, not that. There's another butcher. This one. No, this one. Is that the other one? They're both inside now. I don't know the ace. Yeah. You like the ace one?
That's it for that exhibit. The state is uh, at the pleasure of the court and the jury if you want to proceed. Can the parties approach for a moment? All right, members of the jury, thank you so much for your attention this afternoon. The state still has some additional evidence to place into evidence. It's about an hour or so. Now, I know I've got a note this morning. We can't stay past 530. So the question I ask half of y'all is, are you okay with staying until 530? Or do you want to go ahead and call it an evening at this point in time? I'll leave it to you. It's five o'clock. Five oh three, exactly. It's five thirty, correct though? That's my understanding. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Um state, you may continue. Mission published twenty one, which was key for identification. You may you may proceed, sir. Are they audio or video? It'll be video, thank you. Um can are these redacted, counsel? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, members of the jury, I have an instruction just to read to you with regard to states twenty one you just saw. I'm sorry, states twenty two, forgive me. Members of the jury, you have viewed and listened to video and audio recordings. The court instructs you that the recordings have been edited to eliminate irrelevant portions that would not add to your understanding of this case. The fact that the recordings have been edited should not concern you in any way and must not impact the way you viewed, listened to, and consider this evidence. Thank you. State, you may proceed. It's 21 uh, DVD in its main folder. It's labeled a folder of attachments, and then there's a file labeled extraction going into folder attachments. First file being published is img underscore 0665.mov. Date modified metadata indicates 12 3 2019 2 5 p.m. When I leave the house, does that you know where you're going? I did not like me. Yes. Does that you know where you're going? And I get to leave the house. Yes. Just let me know where you're going, so at least I know where you're at. Anything else like that? I love you. So it's not yank me back in the house and sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up? Mm -hmm. Yeek. No. Just let me know where you're going, so I know where you're at. So if you don't come back, there's no certain time. You have to come home at a certain time. You know what I'm you're, you're, you're a grown up. I just want to know that if, if it does surpass a certain time, that it's like, shit, where's she at? I know where you told me you were going to be in. So that way I can go with you. Shut my mouth, have friends. Yes. Why say you can't have friends? I can still see food. 
you go seek whoever. I just don't want you to go frolicking with your male friends by yourself because you know what's happening already. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I can stress you good. Do you get what I'm saying? I can stress you good. I don't care about boo. You can go to see boo. Do you understand what I'm saying? Next video is a long file name that starts with 2A494, and it's the only one that will show up with that search. Date modified indicates 12-29-19-12-26. Hi, thank you. I don't know what you're talking about. That's just like, right? You got a couple of men. Couple? Couple? Mm -hmm. The word you use is couple. Alright. Alright, so this, this, this is. <laughs> my, my, my most. She's you gotta put it off of my face, dude. I know you're throwing me, but you gotta put it off. What the fuck is that? Stop. Bum rush. Yeah, you bum rush. I'm bum rushing. Yeah, and whatever. Whatever. Angry. Well, it's the choice. So, the choice was to beat your ass or get my ass beat or whatever. No. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. What? Twice. I like twice. I've been trying to get twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to get twice. I've been I've been trying to get some of that right here. I'm from other shit. I know what's going on. She's trying to throw me from in her and blah blah blah. I'm calling you. And then I said, yeah, you are. You are cool. You are cool. She is cool with me. She is. Beyond cool with me. Oh, I want to do this on some tape. Did I see you serious tonight? No. Did I see you serious for me? No. But I don't know what I was You. I blame it on me. Sorry. I'm hungry. Can I, can I walk around this way and actually film it better? I don't want darkness. Because you're not dark. Ah. There she goes. There she goes. What are you filming? Are you filming me filming you? You filming me filming you. What's this thing you've done in your life? Man, I watched porn. Hey. Wait, wait. Stop. Uh, no, I'm, 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 
was like, um, um, uh, I was, <coughs> I was watching porn with my mom. She did, she, she don't like that. Um, I'm not, I'm not showing my shoulders or anything like that. Like, like it's not a big deal. How many bags of blood in Christ? Yeah. Who no, touched you? I know. I'm not showing my shoulders. Hey! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm meeting you, and I'm going to try and cancel plane tickets. Oh, okay. Because I don't do special things for people like you that are doing this. Like, to me, after I asked you, at what point do you want to join? I wanted to stay asleep. I wanted to stay asleep, which is why I got out of bed at 8.30. I told you not to step foot in the bedroom. So what do you do? Nonetheless, you're drunk. The amount of alcohol, I know how much drunk, I know how much it is. That's why you're, I could smell you in the bed before you actually got me up. I can smell you from here. You're despicable. I'm not despicable, man. You can do anything. Leave me alone. Okay. You're not going to remember shit? Okay, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to Get away from me. Get away from me. You do everything to me all the time. All the time. Heartache and pain is what you cause me. Heartache and pain. Keep going. And I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. You get on your fucking old life and go to fucking work tomorrow. Don't look at me. Don't come close to me. Don't touch me. Do you understand? What do you mean? As of this moment, and it's how I can get you out. I dare you. No, look, look at it. Wait, <laughs> like, get away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. I'm gonna spray my burn. I'm gonna spray my burn. I will spray my burn. Get away from me. I'm gonna fucking hurt you. Nobody's doing anything. And you're filming it. Let me go. I'm asking you, George, to get away from me. Please get away from me. Get away from me. I am. Yeah. That was your function, dude. You're not functioning. You! No, you're not functioning. It's you, dude. Okay, whatever you say. Whatever you say. <laughs> Holy shit, the whole always reeks of you up here. First it's shit, now it's alcohol. Don't step foot in this bedroom. I I can't even breathe. Like I'm, it's disgusting. Like it's disgusting. Then I said, you. I don't love you. I don't like you. I don't want to be with you. Next video is starts four five six. That's the only file that starts with that. Date modified metadata twelve twenty nine two thousand nineteen four oh four p.m. And I'm not going to have no Hindenburg situation, no Titanic situation. Okay, so it's going to be good there. Yes, I'm going to have that right now. And later on, everything's going to go off. True. Nice. 
truth and fact. All of this is going to be mentioned later on. We'll take another video again later on when it happens. Love y'all. We're we'll watching this thing. No. That's not approved. The FDA says it's approved. So it's going to be a good thing all day. Yes, it is. Even when I all day. shave water. All day. Yes. Yeah. Even when I say water, it's all day. That'd be an amazing day. It's what time right now? Shaboy boy, it's 9 30. 7 o'clock. Shaboy boy. That's what we're going to write on. Shaboy boy. You can stop filming now. Stop filming now. It's going to be a great day. Today's a great day to, be a, to have a great day. Run. Cut! Somebody come in with the... With the... Somebody come in with the... Can you not? Next file, image underscore zero nine three dot mov metadata date modified one three twenty twenty two forty eight pm. Hey, if you want to make sure that you have to pay me that call, because I told them that it's my good shit. Next file, image img underscore 0975.mov. Metadata shows date modified January 20, uh, January 19, 2020, 2 p.m. Sirens, 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 and sirens. And this cop car. How did she get an umbrella and tell me Camille already did? Yeah, well, how about we forget about that? No, we won't. I'll never read. How about we keep going on? <laughs> Okay, how about this? When beautiful people here, we don't listen to none of that. I don't want to hear silence. It's just beep, 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 all that other. Yeah, 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 out here in reality. Are you gonna ask me? Yes. Yes. I promise you, I will give you truth. Go for a walk. My, by myself? Yes. No. Go for a walk. I'm going to chill out. If that's the case, I'll just chill out. Someone's place. Don't ever be a woman. How can I be a woman? Don't ever. I can't. But I can uh, some will understand. Don't ever. I can some will understand. Some will understand. I can some will understand. Yes. Where you coming from? But when you have a child, it's like right now, this, this is two months. But we had a blast with them. Amazing. Then you got out of court. I told me I already stole my phone and called Greg. Why is it that I got You pushed me. 
I push. I let him push. How do I get out of sorts all of a sudden? I don't want to hear it. You drink too much and you're upset. Don't get you fucked hard shit. You're talking about your retard paper. Don't hate women. Have I hit you? No. So what are you wrong with this? I'm trying to solve. Tell me whatever it is. You guys do that. Oh. You get it. You can fill me, take a picture, whatever you want. It's your opinion. You're your awesome. I'm not doing it. Do I feel bad? No, I don't. No, I never do. I'm not doing anything to you. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Saida. I'm not doing anything to you. Yes. Yeah. It's not a yes. I won't now. Mr. J. It is 5.28 and we have 3 minutes and 49 seconds of videos. The jury is able to I got a hot thumbs up from the jury. You may proceed, sir. Next image, our movie is IMG underscore 1011.move. Metadata shows date modified 2 2 2020, 11.42 p.m. Hi, my friend. This is what happened. We're going upstairs to the hospital in the car. Because it takes a little time. Where are my car keys? Where are my car keys? Where are my car keys? Where are you? Where are you at? 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 Where are you what in the world are you talking about? There is no. There, there, where, where? Sarah. To wrap the. No, no, You took them. I want you to wait them. Why would I take your freaking car keys? So you're going to be cursed now? What are you talking about? You took my car keys. I didn't take your car keys. You did. <coughs> Movie starting with file name B51, on file name. Metadata shows 12-29-2019, 4 4 p.m. modified. <laughs> I'm going to go to court. I'm going to tell the judge. Listen, my fiancé has nothing to do with it. So I'm going to we were both drinking and God, I isolated situation has never happened before. I love my fiance. She's a good woman. Never been in trouble in her life. She has a seven year old son that she loves and cherishes. A blind rock interior. She has two dogs. <laughs> one is blind, one is deaf. She goes around and she's driving. She's an animal that's dangerous. She'll stop. Don't look at the no matter what kind of traffic it is. Just to make sure that that animal doesn't get into any more than we already have seen. We both love each other. We both get together. Yes, every relationship has their arguments. 
but we are not. The type of people that you guys are portraying us. She especially. Especially her. So please, if you can, dismiss this case. This case. Drop it. She is not the type of person. Good person. Great person. Angel. I know she's an angel. She's comfortable. Best thing I have ever happened to me. Yes, ma'am. I love you, Jeff. I hate that with one. Sonic. What? And they said. Good, I love you. God will be there and will take us out of this situation. That'll be it for today, Judge. All right. Get your voice back up. Members of the jury, it is 5.33 p.m. Thank you again for your time and your service in this matter. I'm going to give you another instruction before I discharge you for the evening. Jurors, you must not conduct any investigation on your own. This includes reading newspapers, watching television, or using a computer, cell phone, the internet, any electronic device, or any other means at all to get information related to this case or the people and places involved in this case. This applies whether you were in the courthouse, at home, or anywhere else. You must not visit places mentioned in the trial or use the internet to look at maps or pictures to see any place discussed during the trial. Jurors do not watch local news or read local newspapers. Jurors must not have discussions of any sort with friends, family members, or even your fellow jurors about the case or the people and places involved. So do not let anyone make comments to you or ask questions about the trial. I want to stress again that just as you must not talk about this case face to face, you must not talk about this case by using an electronic device. You must not use phones, computers, or other electronic devices to communicate. Do not send or accept any messages related to this case or your jury service. Do not discuss this case or ask for advice by any means at all, including posting information on an internet website, chat room, or blog. With that, members of the jury, we'll see you again tomorrow morning here at 9 a.m. at 12 Alpha. Thank you so much. Y'all let me see. Where's that? Thank you. Thank you. Y'all can take a seat. Thank you. State how much uh, additional presentation do we anticipate tomorrow, sir? It is just reading from the uh, 108 page PDF on that last exhibit. I haven't practiced reading in front of the mirror, so I'm not speaking to it. Okay. 40? Okay. All right. Um, and then you'll be resting at that point in time, correct? Yes. All right. Um, defense, what, if any, positions do you have at this point in time? I don't think we're going to put on a sort of There's nothing about it that we're going to Okay. I just think that. Okay. I will, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly let you stew on it this evening. Um, I know it's been a long day for all of us. Where are we and how do we want to address the jury instructions? Because that is going to take some time. I say, <clears throat> I was thinking we should have to do it Well, the other alternative that I can suggest is I'm, I'm, I can be here at 8. I can get here at 8, and we can start working on jury instructions at that point in time, at least so we can move forward through some of it. Um, and then we can try to just move forward, forward from there. <clears throat> 
I'm here for y'all. You tell me what you want. I mean, my worry is it's going to take us some time. And if we start at 9, 940, and it's going to take some time to work our way through these jury instructions. I don't want them sitting back there for two plus hours just hanging out. We can at least get ahead of that. We're still here. I'm fine with that. Stay. They're gone. Okay. What I'm hearing is maybe closing arguments start at one. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible if we can get through all the instructions. Mr. Henderson? If I could come from us. How about 830? <laughs> I'm up at 530. It makes no difference to me. All right. 830 it is. We'll see you all at 830 tomorrow morning, and we'll start to go through the uh, instructions. Anything else, State, you need to address? State or defense? All right. Thank you all very much. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 830. We're off the record.